Welcome back, Achievers. We are now reacting slash breakdowning slash <clears throat> talking about that Xbox Bethesda showcase that we just finished a watch along that you can, of course, watch on this channel right now if you'd like. But if you've already finished that, you can stick with us as we break this pretty in i think a very interesting one to talk about uh showcase from xbox and bethesda of That's course it is june 12th <laughs> this is the easy Shivers gang podcast i'm joined today with of course emmett and my one and only sweet baby boy alex what's up how are you two today i'm doing well i'm doing pretty damn good that's good okay so so no one's mood has been ruined from oh, the no. showcase. That's good. That's I mean, good. No, no, I think right in the high all no. weekend. So well, yeah. good, right? I, I have to. I, I didn't let the hype affect me too, too much until today and this morning when people were starting to talk about it. I'm like, all right, okay. I'm starting to get a little excited. Expectations mm -hmm. were going up pretty high. So let's figure out where we stand on this. Now, I want to first get everyone's feelings immediately after, and then we're going to actually hit what was in this showcase. And I, of course, want to start with our guest, mm -hmm. Emmett Watkins Jr. Emmett. We have just finished that showcase. We have just stopped watching Xbox Bethesda Showcase. I want you to tell me, what is your immediate reaction to what we just watched? My immediate reaction is, if Summer Games Fest used more indies, then we would have thought highly of it. Mm. <laughs> because this, mm. this showcase was very good. I liked it a lot. Um, even when they showed games that I don't think I'm going to play, they were interesting. They were engaging to look at. Um, the pace was a little bit brisker here as well um, than the Summer Games Fest presentation. But really, it's just they had something for everybody. And even though they didn't really have crazy heavy hitters, and at least one of the heavy hitters they did had didn't seem like it was that heavy of a hitter. But we'll talk about that later. Yep, um, <laughs> we sure will. Yeah, even despite that, I feel like the show is very good. This is a solid like. I'd say a solid B, um, not the craziest thing ever, but there was a lot, a lot of games here that I'm excited to play and a lot on Game Pass. So, yeah. Good job. Alex, same question. Mm. No, I agree, I agree with Emmett. Um, there were some ones that I'm like, mm, I don't know. It's it, uh, like the... What is it? How It was just uh, like, I'm glad that they kind of got the the motorsports and the flight simulator all out of the way and then showed us the indie games because that that was the more exciting part as i agree and then we saw some big titles and we're in i'm concerned about them okay yeah all right but it's I, overall I, I give it a brown a b as well yeah i think i don't think i, I don't think i have anything incredibly different to say uh, compared to you two i think it was pretty good i do agree with alex even though while i was watching it, i was starting to get worried getting flight simulator mm -hmm. and forza right at the beginning and then immediately like all right we're done with that we're gonna go into the games that you probably are here for for these random mm -hmm. indies these random type of games that uh and i and uh <clears throat> to go off of what you just said alex this i think is is almost the like perfect one game for everyone type of showcase. <clears throat> yeah, they hit the yeah. gambit in almost every single yeah. category. Now, when you do that, I do think it affects the overall grade of the showcase because you don't have something crazy usually when you do that, but you do have a more average reaction between everyone versus having these kind of peaks and valleys. For instance, like if you ended with like, I don't know, Indiana Jones, for instance, like probably a lot of people that are Indiana Jones fans would yeah. be happy about that, but... If you're not, you don't probably care at all. So I think this is actually perfect for a, and this is gonna, I think this is gonna sound like a critique, I don't mean it, for an average showcase. For if you want everyone to kind of be pretty happy, I think this is one of the things you do. You have, you go from Redfall to Riot Games to Forza Flight Simulator, and then like Ark. Like, we're, that is every <laughs> yeah. left, right, center turn there master of all mm. trades but master of none yeah that's yeah that's a perfect it way sounds of doing more it. negative but it's a good it, good way to do it <laughs> it does it sounds negative but it's i don't mean it to be i mean it it can only be so good when you have to cover like this huge swath of gamut i think the only game i didn't see was like a card game and technically that was in the riot game thing so like yeah. <laughs> there is almost a thing every genre imaginable in this that like I off the top of my head, I can't even think of a genre that might not have been here. So I, I really do think like they nailed the. Yeah. Hey, we want everyone to have two games 
to go home with and tell their buddy like yeah i was really excited about this one like i really like lightyear frontier yeah and i will give it to them i shit on xbox every single time they do this why because they almost never show gameplay they clearly took the feedback with this and we saw games being played and that's all i want i just want to see games being played. i don't want cgi trailers <laughs> the entire time and we at least got to see clearly someone picked a controller up and played a little bit of a game which is oh yeah which is good they almost never do that so that this was a good change of pace <clears throat> Now that we've gone through kind of first reactions to that, let's actually go into the showcase. And then I almost can't wait until we get to the end of this so I can really have some. Because <laughs> so, I'm sure we're going to have some hot takes of what, they, of, of what they ended with. But let's start with the, the opener, which I, I think was pretty wise, is Redfall. I think that that immediately grabs everyone's attention because it's so interesting looking. Yeah. Now, Emmett, I think you are... I think you're the highest on this game. So I want to hear from you first mm. from Redfall. First off, this game looks great visually and uh visuals aesthetics the gunplay actually looks really good too what did this mm -hmm. sell you on it even more or were you already there i was already interested just because like the whole vampires with the little robot buddy with like the diverse cast of characters i'm like all right i'm I, i'm interested for you to tell me more and now they've told us more and i'm definitely gonna play this um i was telling we talked about it during the live stream like i'm kind of getting into back for blood more than i did at launch because is kind of hitting a scratch that I want right now. Right. Redfall looks like it's going to hit a scratch even more. And I think a thing a lot of people worried about is that it was going to be purely a Left 4 Dead type where it's just here come the horde, shoot them up. And that's more or less the whole. Here's a bunch of guns. Of keep shooting them. Exactly. Here's a Molotov. Throw it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Heal me or something. Yeah. Let's hear all that good stuff. Let's get a med kit. Um, yeah. Uh, but no, it looks like, you know, people are going into stealth mode. You're sneaking around enemies here. You're yep. able to like call shots for all your co-op partners like you said during the, the stream ghost recon it up <laughs> yeah you get to call your shots go, mm -hmm. ghost recon is fuck and i'm gonna have the cat down yeah exactly, <laughs> yeah you're over exactly. the mic one two three you forgot to adjust for like the the audio break so, you, so you're like fuck you shot before no <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm i'm excited for that it for for me personally i think i i just fall into these more action strict types of games anyway but when you have this element of oh you can stealth a little bit here that makes it more dynamic in a way that i think is going to be more broader appealing so i'm definitely going to try it out um they did flash for a split second like the inventory screen with all the colored weapons and stuff and i'm sure some people were like oh fuck more how loot. dare they but, but i i like that stuff i don't <laughs> find it to be such a big a gr like horrible crime i think that's fine it, it's and honestly yep. looks fun it reminds me of the the slow change of the industry because four years ago the hyped thing uh inspired a lot of these devs and now we're starting to see those devs making those games regardless if it was four years ago we're seeing it now and four years ago the most popular thing was here's a colored item that you got here's you know yeah. destiny was getting huge all right let's make these like easy progression systems where like the more you pick up the higher your number goes because everyone likes that number slowly to get up so i don't mind it too much i mind it when it seems bland kind of like uh with avengers did where there's no seeming progression yeah. it's just a it is literally just a number whereas mm -hmm. uh as long as they nail it here maybe you get different powers or uh, uh honestly what i don't see enough in is set bonuses <clears throat> or something where like you get a, a set yeah. you combine it and have a bonus from it as long as they keep it you at least a little unique i don't care about the gear number that seemingly everyone out of nowhere starts to not like now i don't i don't care <laughs> it just simplifies it too much because then it's not oh is this gun like what are the attributes does this have elemental damage what's the clip size you're not looking at all the individual parts you're just looking at the number and comparing <clears throat> it which is good for comparison's sake and speed and all that stuff but for me i like caring about the attributes as someone who liked a lot of original borderlands not even two necessarily um i played a lot of two as well but one is my preferred one um those were the elements that were important there and i would like to see that carried forward so hopefully redfall will do it um but i'm very positive on the game overall yeah me too as long as they uh can have a unique way of blending their special <laughs> attributes that each character has clearly there's the sniper clearly yep. there's like the sneaky um uh stealthy the, the stealthy mean. kind of girl that um can um i don't know that was the guy i think i yeah, don't remember which one turns invisible yeah, yeah yeah and when you know as long as it sticks to that and i'm not getting like 
your shotgun is 20% better on the sneaky guy or something. I, I don't care. So, yeah, so, I like that you could all the abilities and stuff. It does, yeah. yeah. And and that that looked cool. Like, especially, um, I'm still in love with, uh, I don't think we got, we probably have names for people. I just don't know it yet. But the, the main character with the, uh, with the, the hair, uh, yes. Purple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yep. Uh, her with too. her moves, when she's able to catapult herself around, like, that looks sick. So I can't. Yeah, I can't Manuel, yeah she's great. <laughs> I, I can't wait for this game. And, um, and just to make sure I'm not wrong, I, I don't think we have a date still. I think nah, sp- still early 2023, I think is all it said. Yep. Which, yeah. I'm happy. I, like I said, like I said during the show, I don't, I don't want fake dates. If you don't have a date, don't tell it to me. So yeah, here we go. don't tell it. I don't, I don't care. You have me hyped, so I, you have my money. Just show me when it's coming out. For sure. When it's for ready. Sure. Next up, we have a. I don't think any. I literally, I don't think anyone guessed this. Bright Games announced a collaboration, which oh, no. I think still is kind of unclear. I'm gonna go to Xbox Wire while I talk to you, gentlemen. But I'm pretty sure how it works is if you have Game Pass and you link your account with your Riot Games account. You are basically unlocked with all of the paid content on their free-to-play games. So, for instance, League of Legends, you would get all of the Legends. For Valorant, you get all of the Agents. For the card games, you get all of the major cards and some expansions and things of that nature. And honestly, this, without having any bias, might be the biggest announcement here. Yes, that is probably yep. the biggest announcement slash biggest deal from this entire thing that they are able to say if you have Game Pass. Um, I'm not sure if they said if it was Ultimate or not. It might just be Game Pass for PC. You <clears> get <throat> all of the stuff that you would normally pay for for free. Uh, I don't know. Neither. Well, Alex and I are a bit more on the right games path. I mean, I know you're not too much into it. Uh, do you have anything to, to say on this? Eh, this might get me to check out Valorant, but other than that, I'm more or less indifferent. I yeah, want to see I think, how it works on mobile phones too. Yeah, yeah. Wild Rift as well, or League of Legends Wild Rift also got the same announcement that you get all the characters and stuff. Alex, I think this mm. is a pretty big deal, especially for you and me, where we kind of casually play League, so yep. we're never really going to buy all these characters. But now that it's for Game Pass, this very much talks me into, yeah, I kind of want to click on and see what's going on now I, that that kind of gets me excited that i don't now have to pay for those legends i wanted to try yeah, to begin with it's wild because you're saving so much money because for example with league of legends if you buy every single champion in league of legends it costs you a hundred and thirteen thousand rp which is equivalent about... to 700 or excuse me 640 dollars yeah so, so the... you're saving 640 dollars now that you don't have to worry about spending yeah yeah, and that's real. <laughs> the legends yes. are very expensive, unless you yeah. buy them like, like uh, you buy RP like and each very RP and range. Yeah, so yeah, I, I forgot it was that much. Jesus, but yeah, yeah, that yeah. I can't wait for. I can't wait for this to go in effect. I think it's one of those things where it's available soon. I don't think they gave us even a date. I think I'm double I checking. Here. I thought it said soon, and then I said I thought it said something about winter. But this I can check. winter, yes, I'm seeing the blog post yeah. right now. This winter, <clears throat> you'll have this kind of collaboration. It still looks like all Game Pass members will be able to play. Okay, so yeah, as long as you're a Game Pass member, you get a lot of stuff. So this That's winter, wild. at some point, we'll get this edition, which is still kind of nuts to to think about all right next up was uh oh uh nothing too crazy for me but this is plague tale uh plague tale requiem i i love the aesthetics of the game i think i'm going to come back to the series with this i tried the first one and i wasn't super into it but Emmett, you popped for this so please yeah. tell me tell me why i mean it's just another tell it, it me looks why. like it's gonna be <laughs> honestly well i don't know if i was gonna connect that but um yeah it just looks like a lot like the original plague tale um the original plague tale is really good played it on ps5 and i need to beat it actually but it seems like for this one they're um i don't want to get into spoilers because quite frankly i haven't played enough of the game to give real spoilers but mm-hmm. they tease that something's up with the little boy in the game as mm-hmm. you're playing it and i haven't played long enough to know what's up with him but there's a little split second tease at the end of this trailer that kind of hints as to what might actually be going up going wrong with him and to i said on reaction i was like i just got spoiled loki but yeah. there's still probably a story there <clears> as <throat> to why that's happening and the how that happened i want to see what's up with that like is there as far as i know the game the game is a very grounded game as far as the first parts that i played so i'm wondering if they're going to 
make it slightly less grounded in ways that I don't want to talk about specifically. But yeah, it looks pretty. It looks like it's going to have a lot of the same gameplay, some new gameplay elements with that spoiler specific reason that I talked about there. That's really interesting. And yeah, it's just going to be a really good Game Pass title. Run through it in like 10 hours. I think it'll be really good. Yeah, I'm reading um, the blog post now. It looks like they are visiting southern France is where you're going to be primarily headed. And it's still very, uh, they even mentioned it here, it's very gloomy, war-ridden environments. It's still that constant war that's happening in, in uh, the 14th century. Yeah. Uh, yeah, aside from that, it all looks about what you'd expect from the Plague Tales game. But I'm really hoping, I, I first off, the aesthetic looks really cool. Especially, I don't know why, but I'm digging the crossbow look on this chick. Like, with her, with the mm-hmm. crossbow. She looks so sick. But I can't wait for more of this. Alex, do you have anything to say before I move on? Um, I've played the first Plague's Tale a little bit. I didn't, uh, did a couple of chapters in. It was pretty cool, uh, like story. Like the story, I was so intrigued with. But like uh, the gameplay, sometimes it can get a little, you know, a little repetitive. Yeah. But like wanting, I, it, I still wanted to go back and play it. I just never got a chance. This kind of makes me want to go back because I'm like, oh, well, what is wrong with the kid? You know, I want to I now finish the. Emmett is helping finish me up a little one. bit. I'm like, what the oh, fuck right? did he see? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't need to play this. Now. I mean. The games are just really cool. They're good, linear, yeah. you know, cinematic action games. As a PlayStation person, I've played a million of them, but this is a good version of that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they're really good. These next two, I doubt either any of us are going to have too much to say about it. So I'll kind of okay. combine it. We can, we uh, came up with Forza Motorsport. Um, it's coming spring 2023. I think no one really saw it coming. So clearly an internal delay of some sort happened. Uh, and we also get a flight simulator uh 40th anniversary for november that kind of looks like it celebrates a bunch of just the history of flight we saw some very early like airplane uh things that you could fly there's a bunch of different types of airplane they also showed off the pelican that you can fly that is available now actually so if you want to go play the update right now you can um but aside from that do either you two have i and i doubt you do forza or flights man anything anything i mean Respect I mean, I'll play Forza, to, but that's it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, respect to flight history, but we ain't the right brothers for this. No, no, right? no, no. <laughs> uh, God damn it, Emmett. <laughs> You're too good, man. You're too fucking good, and I hate it. I load uh, them up too quick. <laughs> yep. I, um, uh, same for me. I'll, I'll be shocked if I even play motorsport. Uh, it might be a quick sh- you know, fly around a, a track or something, but I have nothing yeah. to say about mm. these two. Uh, moving on yeah. to... To a, a much bigger deal, I would say, is, is Overwatch 2. Uh, and they kind of broke open, seemingly broke open, although it's been kind of vague, I feel like. But but they said, hey, it's free to play. It'll be on Game Pass. Assumably, the campaign will be. I'm still kind of confused, but it seems like I, the multiplayer is free. But uh, it's on Game Pass, at- so I'm guessing that you're paying. You're not going to pay if you have Game Pass for the campaign. Other than your Game Pass subscription. Looking at the little graphic they put at the end of the show where it showed every game that is coming in the next year, Overwatch 2 was on here, but there's no Game Pass title next to it. So I'm assuming they're just announcing and that, it's- hey, it's coming to consoles with the little open beta thing this year. Interesting so enough, they it. don't have a blog post about it. So yeah, clearly they didn't have much to say about it or they couldn't say much about it for whatever that is happening with this. Um. But it does have an early access, like I meant to say, for October 4th. So that's a pretty big deal. And it's going to be on console and PC, the early access. So I'm excited. I'll definitely be in that. I will be playing this as soon as I can on early access. I will say there is no blog post for it. But on the like overview of the entire conference, uh, they do say stick around for June 16th. Uh, there's an Overwatch event happening specific to just Overwatch 2. So you'll find out more about and it and probably get campaign details. Yeah, interesting. They will finally tell you what that's about. Yeah, <laughs> what exactly. what it even is. Cool. Uh next up we have Oh, Alex, you you didn't say anything. Do you want anything about Overwatch 2? I mean, I'm excited for it. I'm just I'm really just more excited if anything just uh, with the single player because I mean, Overwatch 2, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming the online is going to be the pretty much the same cuz I watched a little bit of the gameplay uh recently and i was just like i mean it's this it's the same it's fun but like i'm really excited just for something new so i'm excited to see what the the thing looks like the the story aside from a couple ui things it's pretty much the same thing the major difference of course is it's 5v5 now uh where uh there is only one tank so that is kind of the biggest difference we'll see how much that uh messes with the gameplay when i get my hands on it. i can't speak too too much about the differences because i haven't had my hands on it go ahead emmett 
I will quickly say the Wastelander looks cool. The new little oh yes, kind of, like Borderlandsy character they announced. She looks really nice. Her so shotgun remember. looks so cool. What and her yeah. move her where she like spun. Thing. That yeah. was sick. Yeah. So I agree with them at there. Yeah, the new character looks very cool. Yes. And uh, yeah, October fourth early access. Next up, we have. Um, so we all thought this was a different game. This is Aria yeah. Human Untold. I have nothing for this. Yeah, uh, it looks cool. Yeah, I yeah, yeah I'm at a. So what? What? What is it like? A strategy and game? Like I don't even. From the Vault Close, an upcoming turn-based historical grand strategy game uh, for Windows PC. So this is only a PC game. This is coming from Oxide Games and Xbox Game Studios is publishing the title. It looks like a Civ like basically. Yep, it looks like they're trying to be uh, a Civ type Age of Empire. Wish I would have saw the gameplay just so I had an idea of what it looks like because I'm just picturing Civ in my head now. So interesting if they'll have mm-hmm. anything different uh glancing over this blog post it sounds like they're literally describing civilization six so um it looks like yeah. it's pretty much a different it looks like we can okay so i think for the xbox insider program you might be able to sign up to play some stuff with the game so check that out if you want more details uh because it's kind of unclear what it what this whole thing is but it looks like a just a strange game uh, next up, we have Elder Scrolls High Isle, another expansion uh, for Elder Scrolls Online. I have absolutely nothing to say about this, gentlemen. Speak up if you have something to say. Yeah, I, nah, I've, I, we've, tr- we've tried this game. It's, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, long time achievers will know. Me and Alex have tried this multiple times. I just can't get into it. I have to accept yeah. that. It's not going to happen. I wish I would be able to play this. Yep. I just, there's something about it that maybe it's too much or something, but I, I just can't get into it. Yeah. And y'all got further than me, so that's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, uh, basically copy and paste what I just said to this game, Fallout 76. The pit was shown off. They show yep. off the, the new kind of area that you'll be able to go to. It looks like a pretty hefty expansion for the game. Uh, for all those Fallout 76 Nuka people that you're paying for the game, there you go. You enjoy, <laughs> but uh, I have nothing to say. Yeah, I'll say I'm happy Fallout 76 is coming a pretty far way since it's really rough start um i'll say specifically the pit like you're in pittsburgh it gets based off of the fallout 3 dlc yep that's not the most visually arresting location no. that they could have chosen i'm sure lore wise it's interesting but for me i'm like all right that the game is still solid that game is still fine i'm sure it will be fine with the pit dlc but eh, it is what it is Yep, happy for the people who are happy. Forza Horizon 5, July 19th, is getting a Hot Wheels expansion, just like the previous game did. And it looks pretty much what you would expect if you had played that expansion. It looks like a giant kind of Hot Wheels-like levels are being added. Uh, Most likely, they'll be adding more cars from the Hot Wheels franchise uh, to this game. It looks cool. It looks... I don't... I'll tell you with what. Like, the picture they have for the blog post it looks exactly like the Forza Horizon 4 one does, except it just has 5 now. So, it, I think that's what you can expect from this expansion. And it will be yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will play it. I guarantee it. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I played the other one. I mean, Emmett, did you play the Lego thing? I didn't play the Lego or the okay. Hot from previous ones, no. Okay. The Lego one fun. was crazy, because you were the actual Lego yeah. guy driving around. It was, yeah. It was weird, but it was kind of cool. Next up, um, Arc 2, coming out in 2023. Uh, Mr. Vin Diesel was still on the cover. Somehow, he's still part of the game. I don't know why <laughs> or who talked to them or what cousin knows a cousin that got this guy into this game, but they have Vin Diesel on it. Uh, uh, cool. I don't, I don't have They loved him in the wheel, man. They had to bring him back to games. <laughs> <laughs> Only you, Emmett. <laughs> How do you know all of these games that I vaguely know? <laughs> Because I, 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 I was born into darkness. <laughs> <laughs> well, molded by it. Yeah. Uh, Alex, I know you don't have anything, so I will spare you. Yes, I, I've never, I've never tried Ark. Never seen. I like, I love dinosaurs, but I'm like, every time I see this game, I'm like, no. Did you ever want to gameplay? I'm sorry, what? Like, where's it's... the gameplay for Ark Two? Because this is like nowhere. What, here? Yeah, it's like. <laughs> It was a CG trailer, Game Awards, not last year, but the year before. Yeah, it was all the resources into Vindy's face and grunting. Mm. <sighs> yeah, He's it's literally dinosaur. like, yeah, exactly. It's the same level of CG we got last time. No gameplay here, despite the whole conference being centered around gameplay. It feels weird for it to even be here. Like, yeah, if, if, if I'm, I'm in charge of Xbox, I go, what do you have? Yeah. No, you already did that. I mean, so why would I show it again? 
what a big reason why Xbox gets painted into this corner of CG only showcases is because they want to make sure they have brands yeah. where if it either they show you something cool or they have a brand, you know, and this is definitely a brand that millions know. So it's a good little slot filler. But I for a game like Arc 2, knowing what Arc 1 is. Yeah, I'm not excited to play Arc 1. No, no, no. Game. And if you are shout, shout out to you. But even if you are a fan, I feel like you're still not happy with what they showed. Exactly. They didn't show you anything. They, if they at least vaguely show you concepts of the game, I could at least understand that. But the CGI chair was literally just Vin Diesel and a fucking dinosaur. So like, yeah, what else are you? I don't know. I don't know. That might have sold copies in 2005, but now... <laughs> but now, at least vaguely show me gameplay throughout a CG trailer. Like, you could do that, at least. Um, next up, we have... Uh, basically, if you've ever wanted to fuck a wall with a gun, here you go. Uh, that's what Scorn is, it seems. Uh, there's this weird... The, if you know Scorn... <clears throat> Jesus, it, it, it leaves an impression. I'll say that. It's coming October 22nd, and, or sorry, October 21st. It finally has a date, uh, so we can all burn our eyeballs in this game. This thing looks horrific. Uh, I will say, again, yeah. Emmett, you popped for this. Let mm. me know. What, what, is, what, kind of, what kind of sick shit are you into, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. I'm starting to realize something about myself, because I popped really hard at Callisto Protocol, and that Dude, shit, I love mm. oh. but <laughs> See, I'm in that. But see, but that's not, different I'm not, because it, it, I'm not. That's fucking like that's the like Dead that's Space. Killing, that's like Dead Space's <laughs> baby, though. Like we, uh, like we, we no, love Dead Space. Uh, that's fair, true. Fair. But uh, I'll say for Scorn specifically, I've been very interested in this one. Um, I said it during the reaction stream. Any game or really just anything that I look at, and I'm like, how the fuck did you think of this? Mm -hmm. I want to play that. It seems interesting to me. Uh, if you've never laid eyes on Scorn, think HR uh, Geiger type of imagery. Where yep. everything is flesh. Turn it to twenty seven <laughs> though, like, they, like, like, yeah. Like, think like of it. You're sh I'm shocked that someone made this. Frankly, yeah. And that's why I'm like, oh, I'm even more shocked. This is on Xbox's <laughs> showcase. That's even crazier. Multiple times has this thing got on like major okay. showcases. They're like, well, we're gonna show Scorn, and then we'll show Minecraft. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'll say, um, if you guys remember this game, Agony, from like. 2017 yes or, yeah, yep. yeah yeah it had that like, weird demogorgon thing yeah where it yeah. had like sideways mouths and dead yeah. movies and stuff like yep. that's <sighs> another game that has a similar vibe and aesthetic to scorn but the difference is agony didn't seem like it was a good video game but mm. scorn looks like it has gameplay <laughs> gotcha so like yeah i'm excited to see what scorns it because they have like all these organic weapons where you're like popping like organic things into it to reload it just looks so weird and bizarre and i'm like man that is so creative and i just want to i'm see i'm making fun of you here i mean i but i agree with you like i i am i'm going to play this for, yeah. just from sheer curiosity at this point that I, I imagine it's going to be really short too and that's perfect for me I hope so. I really do hope so. Cause, cause I want it to leave an impact, but I doubt I can play a game like this for 20 hours. Like I really do not mm -hmm. want to sit down and like, all right, time to play scorn again. Like I don't fucking destroy my mind with this horrific image. My 30th hour of scorn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My 30th hour of yeah. this torture of hell. But yeah. It should be a good game pass quick. Yeah. And I'm very much so looking forward to that. Alex. Mm. Hmm. Anything for this game. I, I, I like it because how fucking weird it is if he's part of my French. Like, it's like... Like, I like how creepy it looks. Like, when I first saw Scorn, I'm like, that looks gross, and I'm digging it. Mm. Like, yeah, I, I don't I mean, know, like I said, we it's like... this game three years ago, so we're f we finally have a day for this. Yeah, wow. like, for some reason, like I said, I've always, like... Like, I always think of, you know, Miyazaki's brain. I'm like, oh, what fucked up stuff to have you think of? And then I see this, I'm like, somebody must have the same mindset. <laughs> yep next yeah. up we have um something that I'm, i swear to god i've heard of i just don't know where flintlock siege of dawn comes out early yeah so we saw this before yeah and it looks it looks really fucking cool uh mm -hmm. i dig it they if i remember correctly they don't have a blog post for this so i'm gonna have to look this up really quick but if i remember correctly like this game looks fairly um uh, oh, this was the was this the top down 
I'm already forgetting. No, Flintlock was Flintlock the, is like, behind the shoulder. That's right. It's no, the one that kind of like force spoken. Yeah. And stuff. I saw the. I already yeah. see the picture. That, that's right. Yep. With the with the cool. We saw. Yeah, they look like kind of like yeah. force spoken, but in a good way. <laughs> not 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 in the bad way. This looks really cool. Yeah. I'm down for this. Uh, apparently, this is actually a delay though, because uh, apparently they mentioned a date prior to t- uh, early 2023. Oh, um, really? Yeah, it might have been set for later this year. Actually. Yeah, it probably had a generic year date. But people are saying, yeah, it, it, this is technically a delay. It yeah. looks cool. We did get a good bit of um, uh, gameplay from this, and whatever she's doing with her axe, I'm a part. I'm I'm with it. I, I love it. Uh, I'm down. This is another yeah. one where Emmett, you kind of shot up for. I want to hear. Yeah, uh, this one. I'm trying to make sure I get the developer right. I'm looking up. Oh, that's who made this game. So I earlier said on the on the live stream, the developer of uh, of Remnant into the Ashes made yes. this. Oh, did that they? Is incorrect. It is incorrect. That's oh, incorrect. oh, oh, okay. The developers of Ashen, if you remember that, like Souls like with A forty four games. Style. Yes, yeah. no, it, yeah. yeah, yep, I remember that one. Yeah, that's why I was so excited for this one. So yeah, when I heard that, because I heard Ashen and it seemed interesting, and I think I, I, I think it's coming to the new PlayStation Plus tomorrow, so that's exciting. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, Flintlock just sounded really interesting, and knowing that group was going to be doing something with like some some range combat in there instead of just melee, I was very excited. Looking at this gameplay, it was one of those things where the whole the whole trailer, I was like, oh, this looks cool. This looks cool. But I'm like timidly excited because I'm like, I don't know who's making this. I don't know what the story is. And then when they showed Flintlock at the end, I remember popping when the Flintlock got announced a couple months ago. So that's just like, that's a solid buy for me. Um, I think it's going to be on Game Pass. But yeah, I'm super excited for that one. Looks like it'll be a nice little... It'll be like a Dark Siders tier of game in mm. my game, which I'm a big Dark Siders fan, so I think that's gonna yep. be right up my alley and a perfect Game Pass game. So. Yeah, yeah, I can, I definitely agree with that. I'm, I'm watching, I'm rewatching a little bit of the trailer now. Yeah, especially with the axe, it seems like you have some sort of teleport, teleporting dog with you as, a, as some sort of a, mm-hmm. a gameplay of, uh, or at least combat effect. This looks cool, although I hope this is one of those games where it plays well. Because it looks visually appealing, I can't tell really if this looks satisfying. Now that looked cool. She lo- she double jumped while shooting the ground. That looks kind of cool. Yeah. Hopefully it's not. A, it looks a little static. Like it looks like she's not. Um, yeah, moving it looks a little fluidly st- with the environment. Mm-hmm. But if this nails at least half of what it's promising, I feel like it's gonna be a good game. Yeah. That's where I'm at, and I think I I believe in this studio enough to think that they'll nail at least half. Now it does say open world, which makes me a little like, eh, can you nail an open world and look like this? I don't know, but we'll see. Hopefully, it's open world in the way that something like God of War is open world. Thank you. Where That's all of the levels it. are connected, but yeah. you know, but but we'll see that it's like, like like it's more of a like kind of like a bigger sandbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's almost yeah. like the same box. It's just connected in tunnels and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Um. Uh, oh, and moving on, the, the, this did leak, but I, I'll be honest, I said it in the showcase, I did not think this was real. I really didn't. I did not think. <laughs> uh, it's called Minecraft Legends. It is an action strategy game coming uh, next year. Uh, I, I'm not going to play this, but I'm happy it exists for, you know, all those kids that love Minecraft. Um, I used to work at a video game stores, and every kid that come in that liked Minecraft wanted to play Dungeons. And that was a fun way of them exploring uh, different games, frankly. So they're not just playing the same thing. So I love when Xbox isn't afraid to be like, let's try a top down action kind of game now with Minecraft. And it's and they're just going to see what sticks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is one. This is one. I'm I'm not excited for it on my own like you. Um, I don't think I'm going to play this. I will say I was a little bit interested when I saw that it wasn't a top down look at it from the sky type of like yeah. Age of Empires type thing. It is behind the back a little bit. Um, like I said, it's like Brutal Legend. If you ever played that game back in the day. Yes. Um, I can't believe you shot up really. I can't. I mean, so, it's so cool. It I'm still waiting there. for this day for a remaster. Ooh, One day. You know what? Waiting. That's an Xbox's hand at this point, And I feel like their hands... Oh, it is. I never even thought about it. Yeah, you're yeah, right. It is in their that. hands. So yeah, we'll see. Or actually, EA might be involved a little bit, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, for this one, yeah. like you said, I'm excited for kids to play this. They play everything Minecraft, so I'm glad that I'm really glad that Microsoft is trying to just expand people's taste, not just with all the games they put on Game Pass, but 
with taking their massive franchises and breaking them out into other stuff. They did the same thing with Gears Tactics. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the impact this game might have, but I'm not going to play this. <laughs> it's just not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Anything you want to leave with uh, Minecraft Legends, Alex? Um, it it kind of looks fun. I mean, I don't oh, know. Like, I, I, I've, I've tried, I've tried dungeons, but like, it's kind of what that game. I, I, it, it can't really play by yourself. Right. So I don't. Yeah. So like, I tried playing that. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm kind of bored. But like, I was like, I have to play with someone. So, but other, I mean, other than that, I mean, I probably will give it a shot. Just you know, I like just trying it out. And if it's not for me, then it's not. But you never know. That's usually one of those things where you know, like if I see it, I'm like, I'll give it a shot. It's like how I was with like Man Eater, you know, that was like the one I was like, oh, I mean, that looks game looks great. Tried it, loved it. Mm. Next up, yeah. Lightyear Frontier 2023. This is literally the description on Steam. Lightyear Frontier is a peaceful open world farming adventure on a planet at the far edge of the galaxy. Start your new home on a distant planet with up to three fans as you farm alien crops, build your homestead, and explore the untamed wilderness of the world. So they are Alex, you saying yeah. Farmville isn't that crazy. <laughs> it kind of is a space wow. Farmville with that description. And it's crazy because I used to uh, be obsessed with Farmville. Oh, like, I all, used to I mean, I all live on my computer, right? go do, 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 every couple hours, come back later, do it again. Emmy, you're looking at me, you didn't play Farmville. I did not play Farmville, and I would roast you really hard if I didn't have Cookie Clicker up on my phone. I was right? just about to say, let's, <laughs> let's start throwing stones in our glass houses, Emmy. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I know to humble myself. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I. I I will never play this, but this is one of those. It's that, like we said at the beginning, this is one of those games where someone popped and was like, "Oh, that looks really fun!" Like I love playing Cookie Clear, so I'm gonna play this fucking farm game. I will say I'm a little, I, I'm a little hesitant because honestly, this is the type of game where I feel like it would fit in a wholesome game showcase because I watched that yesterday, um, and I think that's great. I think that's great that they're putting a game like that into a showcase that is often just. What's the biggest gun game? What's the strongest axe game? Like it's normally always like some cutting up blow up stuff. Yeah, I believe and the official really like PR mm -hmm. release was peaceful game or something like, like yeah, like yeah. they're very much saying like you are not fighting anything. So you are hanging out, farming simulator in space kind of thing. Yeah. And it just speaks to the fact that Microsoft wanted to cover all their bases here. I appreciate them doing that. Yep. I am a little bit timid because like when I saw those mechs land, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be an action game. And then they start farming. I feel like there's going to be someone else who looks at that trailer and thinks, oh, there's a nice peaceful get why they're mechs. <laughs> why, 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 why is there mechs? Target exactly. acquired. And it's just corn. Yeah. And he's just eating yeah. corn. <laughs> exactly. So I'm a little bit shaky on that for other people. But overall, I think the game is if the market that finds it sticks with it, then it's going to be a success. Yeah. Stardew Valley people yeah. eat, eat that shit up or, you know, whoever. I don't know mm -hmm. what. You guys like, but enjoy it. Stardew Valley people are the in that range. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can't fuck any of the mechs, so I assume that's like a no go. But some of them might like it. Fuck the aliens. <laughs> 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 Next up, we have Gunfire Reborn. You give me a hundred dollars, and you tell me you give me a list, and you say Emmett's gonna fucking lose it at one of these games. Which one is it? <laughs> I lose every single time. Gunfire Reborn, last game. I'm gonna guess. <laughs> Emmett, why? <laughs> All right. Gunfire Reborn is pretty cool. Uh, people who know me, um, I'm a big Risk of Rain 2 person. I love that game with all my heart. Gunfire Reborn is in that similar vein. It's first person. It's like a more slightly low budget Borderlands-y type of thing. Well, Borderlands is all about like run and jump and kick and all this stuff. Emmett, this really quickly, more... let me cut you really quick. It's hilarious because yeah. I'm because there's no blog post for this. I'm searching around and I found a, a quick GameSpot thing because it, it appears they got a, like a PR release for this. Yeah. You and and Kyle Hillerid have the same exact thing. Uh, Hillard, in the game, in the game, you play as your choice of an anthropomorphic animal with a gun. As you fight enemies, level up, and collect loot. Its closest comparison is Borderlands, but with animals. That is almost the exact same thing that you said. You you're yep. sharing your mind with this with this person. <laughs> Well, every games industry person just shares one brain cell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, that's literally what it is. It's uh, it's a lot more grounded than Borderlands. So I feel like there's not even a jump button in the game, if I remember uh, correctly. But uh, you're just going through. It's a roguelike. So you're getting your coins. You're elevating to the next yep. level, buying I'm upgrades. Out. <laughs> uh, it is. Look, I understand. But it's like really good and really fun for like, you know, 
you there is no some element it. there are elements of like permanent progression i just forget what those specifically are but uh, i picked it up on steam a while back i enjoyed it and i said i'm gonna come back to it one day now i don't have to think about coming back to it on steam i'll play it on console where i don't have to worry about my specs and yeah i'm and, very excited to play it look i suck and at roguelikes and then you go <laughs> yeah. oh it's kind of like a ro and I mean, alex is already just he's conked <laughs> out he's doing something now. He, it's, it, like, as soon as you start the it's like oh no, no i mean no, no. you got to find the right roguelike for you because hey, hey, and, about, and i do yeah. yeah it's not about like oh the roguelike system in general is harsh it's just like if you're if if you don't like side scrolling beat em ups and it's a roguelike, then you're not gonna be good at it. But if it's a shooter and you like shooters and it's a roguelike, then that's it. So it just depends. Out on of it. all the roguelikes I've probably played, I've probably have enjoyed Returnal the most, but it's I suck at the game, so it's hard. So I need to play the co op with Elijah. There's also a finite ending to Returnal, which I think helps for roguelikes. So Yeah. And um it, uh, apparently it's developed by Duo 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 Games. Cool. Hmm. And and it is already out on PC, like I said, so you can go play this if you yeah. want to play it on, it's on PC. mobile as well. Don't know how it plays, but it is on phones. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Next up, we have Lost Case of Benedict Foss, Spring 2023. This is my this is up there with my game of the show. Like the, mm -hmm. this, this mm -hmm. grabbed me immediately. This aesthetic, the very, I want to say, what can I expect? Like, this it's Lucas Arty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could say that. Yeah, it's very dark. The kind of weird demon kind of guy behind him, mm -hmm. speaking these very strange things to him, telling him to do these weird things. I'm very into that stuff. So that looks really cool. And I actually, like I said, this is this might be my favorite show. I, I really liked the aesthetic, Alex. I want to throw it to you because I know you kind are with me with these type of games. So what did you hmm. think of this one? Um, no, I, I actually really like, I like, I love the aesthetic. It gave me like an HP Lovecraft type of thing. Um, I like the, um, I was trying to figure out like what the gist of it is, but it looks like he could, he, he's looking for the father and then he winds up, maybe the father has, it looks I like don't know if he has the power or he's getting the power from that body. Like, I don't know what it is, but like, it's, it's, it's trippy and I love the way the art style is. So like when, when he's looking up, you could with the flashlight, you can see the tentacle stuff. I just loved all of that, the way it looked. Here's a little sub uh, sentence from the uh, the description. Starts in 1925 Boston, where a missing family sends the titular detective on a journey within himself as he battles demons and then covers the truth. Hmm. The and yeah, okay, and, and this is just like oh, it kind of looks like a Tim Burton esque kind of monstrosity throughout the game. It looks cool, like I said, it's early coming to Xbox Series S and X and PC, so no less gen in 2023. Uh, Emmett, you seem a little lower on us. What did you think? Uh, yeah, I'm not super duper excited about it. It did give me vibes of uh, I was talking about this uh, kind of side scrolling souls like Scorn, kind of has that type of creepy factor with like the more whimsical, like almost adventure gamey vibes of something like early Double Fine. Uh, when I looked at it, I, at the first glance, I was like, oh, this is like a uh, Secret of Monkey Island looking type game. So I thought about that too at first, and I was like, mm. no, let me not say that because I don't know if it did. Uh, Just the I, art style. Just yeah, the art I to say, style. Yeah, yeah, only the art style. The game is way different. Yeah, the game has like combat and such. Yeah, the art style, yeah. Yeah, once I started seeing combat, I'm like, oh, this could be for me. But ultimately, it's it's another one where it's a good game. It will probably be really fun. I don't think I'm going to try it, but uh, it looks very solid, and I'm somewhat impressed by it. I did miss the developer. Did anyone have that? Uh, I can look it up real quick. Get on Xbox Wire. It's not on there. I will check. Uh, this is a GameSpot arc right here. Okay. Uh, oh, this is the Rogue Games and Plot Twist. Rogue, game. Rogue yeah. Games, I believe, is the publisher and Plot mm -hmm. Twist is making the game. That's it. That's correct. And, Metro and it is described as a Metroidvania. I'm oh, you want to say two things that get me excited. Yeah, right, oh, right I love there. Metroidvanias. This just seems like the type of Metroidvania where it's less about the combat, more about just the vibe and exploration. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, uh, and um, Alex Van Aken stars in As Dust Falls. This is launched <laughs> July 19th to Xbox Game Pass. This is definitely trying to uh, uh, kind of uh, speak on a very Until Dawn 
um, linear narrative exploration type game that you can experience with multiple people like a family or maybe a party because they were like, oh, up to eight people can play the game. Assumably one person is playing and the other seven people are probably chiming in with choices of things of that nature. But uh, I'm, I'm in the middle with this game, if I'm being honest. I can't tell if I'm into it. i not in love with the art style. I don't hate it. I love narrative games. I love Life is Strange. I love Until Dawn. I love Detroit Become Human. I love these types of games, but I yeah. can't tell if I will like this. I think I'll literally will have to play it to figure out if mm-hmm. I like it or not. Um, Emmett, you seem the the most on this game. So what do you think? Yeah, I'm kind of in a similar spot. I'm I'm a little bit higher on it than you maybe, but uh, really, like when I first saw it, and you see like the stop motion, it looks like just paintings flickering through animations rather than actual smooth animations. That turned me off because I thought, oh, this is just going to be a visual novel. It's going to be stationary, pretty flat. Then the gameplay started, and it's 3D environments and 3D objects that these flat 2D characters are interacting with, and it gives it a very unique art style. Um, Like I said during the reaction, it looks more like a creative decision rather than a budgetary constraint, which is always what I'm looking for. If you're going to do something different, do it because you want to, not because you had to. (laughs) So, um, So, yeah, I'm really digging that. I'm interested in what the story is going to be because it seems like it is going to be one of those um, don't nod, super massive, quantic dream type games for yeah. choices. But I am not sure what type of story it's going to tell because it's giving me like Route 96 vibes, I think is that game from last year. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Yeah, it's giving me those vibes, but it's also giving me like the movie Crash from like 2006 or something. <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, I Yo. feel like they're going to... I I know that's a weird thing to even bring up. But, um, <laughs> that is an Emmett-ass like, description. Yeah, but, uh, God, let me tell you. Um, that's one of the first movies I ever saw where I was like, oh, this is cinema. And then I found out a decade later it's bad. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Doesn't it, touch it, cranked. Yeah, <laughs> cranked. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, it just seems like one of those, like, dramas where it's all about, like the, interpers- like, the intersectionality and interpersonal relationships between a bunch of different people, which can be fun. But like, what is it just the characters that are going to make that interesting? Or is it going to be a super unique scenario that they're going to be in? I need to know more about the story itself to let really be excited. Yeah. But let me get you a little snippet. Okay. Starting in 1998 with a robbery gone wrong in small town, Arizona. The choices you make, the choices you make have a powerful impact on the characters lives in this decades spanning story told across two intense books. So they're calling them books, too. Oh, so this is a storybook. That's why it looks like that. Yeah, yeah. And it's and uh, sacrifice versus survival. Can you break free from your family's toxic influence? Oof. St- calm down with the uh, on the point there, man. All right. It's, oh why are you speaking me to me? Time. What will you, Yeah, at me next time. Shit. What will you sacrifice for your ones you love? Can you overcome your past? Your decision will shape the character's fates. It's woven destinies. Fall two families and their struggle to survive, protect, and endure through challenges rooted in the previous generation's mistakes reveal insights about yourself and those you play with i don't need i don't need you to be fuck how dare you <laughs> but as you discover the underlying values of your decisions and cooperative gameplay with up to eight players local or online or a mix the as dusk falls companion app makes choices and games easy just use oh. your phone or tablet to vote with or against your friends. So there will also be a companion what? app that you can play with the game as a controller. So you won't even need controllers to play right. with the game. This, so you'll probably a- start a game. You can download this app for free and just connect to the game and you'll be able to play it just with your phone. You won't even need another controller for the game. So you can kind of you can kind of paint what the story is a little more with with what we said there. It looks like it's going to be a lot about past generations affecting what these characters are doing now and you'll probably have to choose between these very interesting choices between family and maybe some other situation i like it i what will say talking? reading the description has intrigued me much more than mm-hmm. what i've seen so i am quite interested now this looks this seems pretty good yeah companion app has me a little bit more interested the whole like what is it about generational trauma this year where everyone wants to talk about it kendrick's album's all about it now we got this game like what's going on um i need yeah, kendrick I, to I'm, calm I'm, down I'm, he oh was he was too he was getting too close to home <laughs> yeah he he was doing a lot i wrote about that that's a different thing we'll talk about later maybe um but yeah uh this game looks interesting i i want to see what's up with it i'll probably try it out when it hits game pass uh, yeah Alex, I'm a, you, you say pretty silent you 
I don't know what to think about this with you, honestly. I it's, I know your taste pretty well, but I don't yeah. know if you're it's, gonna play. It this. doesn't seem like I love. Yeah, I love all the like the narrative games, like you know the don't not games, all the things. But I don't know how I, this one didn't really strike me as like as as a me game. And I, the only thing I, I'm just I mean the art style looks cool. I'm just worried how, how fluid it is because it looked like it was going from, you know, like, oh, the, you know, kind of like the flip page type of looking. And then it, some areas was like full on animation to where like you saw the truck move. So my, my, my mind is like, how fluid and how consistent is that? Are you going to have like areas where like you won't see that and then you'll get like a quick one or the other way? Or is it more fluid? Like, that's my worry is how consistent, how fluid is that animate between those two animations? That's a good point. I, I didn't really think about that. And yeah, that could be kind of jarring if if you're like used to that and it comes in nowhere and it's like animated. I don't know. We'll mm-hmm. have to we'll have to see again. I feel like we're all saying things that like we are literally just kind of have to play the game because yeah, you can't yeah. watch this because that's going to ruin it. And you can't really read reviews because it seems very personal. Like, I feel mm-hmm. like we're just going to have to play this and we'll we'll have to figure out if we like it or not. Yep. Next sure. up, a game that looks like some sort of weird Soul Calibur thing that a bunch of people are finding. It looks really cool. Nor- Norika Blade Point. It is coming to Xbox Series S and X, coming to Game Pass as well, June 23rd. It basic it and this is a pretty huge game. This reached 10 million players on PC last year. Uh and that's pretty insane. This game is pretty huge. It's a 60 player battle royale with quote unchanged multiplayer combat i don't know what that's supposed to mean uh end quote <laughs> an auxiliary combination of melee action and unparalleled parkour movement to grapple and scale your way through the map carefully taking out your opponents and emerging victorious uh i don't have too much to say about this first off i heard of the game i just didn't even know what it looked like to be frank uh it looks very cool it seems like one of those things where uh, i don't need another battle royale but emmett you seem pretty interested. What? Why? Um, I remember seeing this game because this game kind of came out alongside. There was another game that was almost this exact same melee combat with a bunch of like swordsman battle royale thing, but it was on PlayStation Plus for a month. Um, I've I it's like Legends or something. Uh, someone out there might know, but this game looked interesting just because that game looked interesting, and they both have the same problem of because it's like think. What if they made a battle royale of the Devil May Cry? Or better yet, Neo might be a better comparison. Um, and that's a cool idea, but when yeah. I have to when I have to fight like that against other players, I'm getting I'm gonna get washed. So Yeah. Uh, that's another thing. I feel like the yes. skill ceiling and seemingly in this game will it can be very high, so you might mm-hmm. not even have a fucking chance in this game. Exactly. You're not good. So that's why I haven't gone out of my way to try and try this game, because I believe it's free to play on stuff like Steam, Epic Store. Uh, oh, no, it's not free to play. It is 20 bucks. Nope. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, just a quick note. It looks like, like I said, June 23rd for Game Pass on Series S and X. And it says at the very end of this uh, blog post, Xbox One players can also look forward to Nariki Blade Point coming later this year. So they're actually taking a, a point to bring it to last gen consoles, too, which is very interesting. Uh, exactly. I wonder why. Yeah, I'm I'm very interested to see what's going to. What's going to happen with this one? Uh, they said there's a campaign mode coming, and that's also mm-hmm. going to be included with the Game Pass release. So um, I will try out the campaign because the gameplay looks fun. I just did want to do it against other players. So if the campaign hits, then perhaps I'll stick with it. Uh, but it seems like a nice little... I love these melee combat games. You know, I talk about Bayonet all the time, talk about Nier Automata all the time. That's my jam. Such so a good game. Really we pre- I recently played that. Mm. Uh, which one, Nier? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we both recently yeah. played that. Yeah. I love so it. Yeah. I, I don't hell remember yeah. who... I don't remember who went back to it first, but I uh, uh, I think I did. I, yeah, and I, I did you all did. three, and I did the three endings. Yeah, and oh. I only did the one, but damn, was it yeah. good! It was. Yeah, fair. I went back. I literally finished it all. Did era, did a bunch of stuff, and I was like, should I start the second ending? I was like, okay, I got to, and then I just could do it. And yeah, I I'll going. say this for for anybody listening, and also you both. You haven't beaten the game until you've played the credits, and you won't know what that means until you've seen that sequence. But once you've played the credits, you've beaten the game. And that okay. happens like that happens after several endings. But the thing about near people say, oh, endings, endings. It's not endings. The first, the first playthrough is one. The second yeah, one second is, is the same story from a different perspective. Switched. So a lot yeah. of stuff. And then the third one is a sequel to the last two. Yep. And so really, the main the, yeah. there's three real like main endings. 
Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because when I looked it up, there was like 27 different endings. It was A through Z, and it was a bunch of like what what you could do. And And there was a yeah, yeah, there was a lot of nonsense. I looked up that too. I was like, okay, that's why these have so many endings. Yeah, Yeah. yeah. all this is. But yeah, if you just want to play through it, see the linear story, you have to get through a couple endings there, and you'll unlock features to where you can skip chapters and such. Um, There's two. There's technically after you beat the one main campaign from both sides. You technically have to beat that next campaign twice, but you unlock chapter select at the end of that, so you can just start at the mm-hmm. last chapter and see yep. what, what the other one is. But yeah, it's uh, it's really good. Near is great. I could talk about that the rest of the podcast. We got a long show. <laughs> All right, yep. yeah, that's yep. enough of the show, everyone. Emma has to talk about <laughs> Near now. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd have to ask you who you who you picked at the end. That's all I'm saying. Ooh, okay. Ooh, that's yep. I that. Yeah, I don't yeah, remember yeah. at this point. I'd have to check my trophies. <laughs> Pentiment is next yes. this is the secrets i'll put that in quotes because we all knew about it but the secret project uh, obsidian was doing kind of on the side in between their outer worlds 2 thing and uh avowed it is kind of storybook ish like the other game but in a different uh completely different idea uh and i'm gonna read this little snippet because i feel like this colors it a little better in pentiments you play andreas mailer a journeyman artist working in a bygone scriptorium of Kisare Abdi Abbey during a time of great social unrest. While finishing his masterpiece, Andreas inav- inadvertently becomes entangled in a series of murders that took place over 25 years. Peasants, thieves, craftsmen, monks, nuns, nobles, and even saints must be investigated and interrogated to expose the truth. So it looks like you're playing a kind of medieval detective yeah medieval detective it looks like you are doing something and you you figure out like someone's been murdered and you're trying to figure out who did it uh this looks pretty cool because i've never seen anything like this uh the art style looks very unique the actual gameplay seems to be unique although it it sounds like you might be playing like em said just kind of medieval detective so this is a a day one play for me out of sheer curiosity alone but also the obsidian name so is starting to mean something to me so i i make it a point to try every game they they release yes uh and also let's uh i want to read this to it let's it will be up to players to decide andrea's choices from his educational background and lifestyle to how he investigates the murders one day he may be digging up a dead monk in the abbey cemetery the next he might be uh spent eavesdropping on peasant gossip at the ladies spinning bee Every decision and accusation he makes carries consequences that will impact the tightly knit Alpine community for generations to come. Sounds like very L.A. Noir-ish at the end there. Sounds like it could be very much like figuring out intel to then uh, confront characters later on. We'll have to see. But I'm very excited about this. Any of you gentlemen can take it from here on if you want to talk about it. Coming November, by the way. Didn't say a specific date, though. Hmm. I mean, I'll I'll say that it looks like you said, visually very interesting. Looks like Renaissance yeah. paintings come to life. I think that's just fascinating on its own. Um, this ain't my type of game. It looks like it's just gonna yeah. be. It, you know, here's the problem because people talked about this. A lot of people in their head when the leaks and stuff were coming out compared it a lot to Disco Elysium in their head, and I get why they're saying that because. So I don't. Much, why Why do you think? I think they're saying that because it's a game where it's all talking. It seems like it's just going to be a okay. lot of talking to people, and that's 90% of the gameplay. Okay. And that, that's not a bad thing, but the reason that the idea of that in Disco Elysium interests me is because people keep talking about how amazing the script is. I don't know enough about this game, know about the script, to know if all that talking's worth it. So I am, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm interested, but I will keep one eye open for it because I don't, the idea of just talking to people the entire game does not excite me. But then again, you got, you know, I love Life is Strange. That's pretty much just talking with slight supernatural elements. I love, you know, Walking Dead. You know, I, I love some of these games. Yeah, and you loved... Um, try, I'm trying to think what game you're thinking of. Uh, shoot the to... fucking people, make them gold, bow, and arrow game. Oh, Forgotten City. Yeah, yeah Forgotten City. City. Yeah, that, yeah and that, that, is, that was fun. That I is 95% too. talking. Exactly. And yeah. I think that's really what it is. In the same way, like in a movie, if it's not a Marvel or action or whatever movie... If you just tell me, oh, this is about two, it, this is just people talking the whole movie. That does not sound exciting, but I have seen some incredible movies where it's people talking for two hours straight. That's true. So, like, it it all depends on the script. And I want to see what people say about the script, say about the characters, yep. all that stuff. And then it'll be on Game Pass for me anyway, so there's no rush really with it. Alex, you were pretty quiet. I, I, I assume you don't have too, too much to say. 
Mm, for Pentiment, no, <clears throat> yeah, it's not my type of game. It looks really nice, and I appreciate the art style. But like, it's uh, it, there's a certain game that I that looks very similar to, but I can't think of it. But it was just never. I was trying to look it up. I, yeah, because there's another game that looks even closer to it, but it has the same art style as Rock of Ages. If you remember those games, it okay. had a similar Monty Python-y type of visual style style to it. There's another game that came out even more recently than Rock of Ages that is closer to this art style. Mm. I can't for the life of me find it or think of the name, but yeah, it definitely has that look. Yeah. But yeah, it's just not yeah, it's not my type of game, unfortunately. Yeah. Grounded finally getting a full release this September. Um this is another Ooh. game I, I don't care too too much, but I'm happy for the people playing it. They announced 10 million players have played the game and it's been about two years since the release. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, I'm just happy for the game. I don't have too much to say. Uh, gentlemen, uh, go with what you will with this game. Yeah, same thing. I, I, I'm i not super duper excited for it. I did play a little bit of the, you know, I guess early access release when it first came out. And I thought it was interesting. I liked the gameplay loop uh, pretty well. Uh, exploration seemed cool. So I am slightly curious to go back and try the full story once it comes out in September. Yep. I just don't know if I will stick with it for the, I'm expecting 15, 20 hours to see the story through. So we'll, we'll find out. That's that's how I feel the same way. Cause I'm like, I, I don't feel like I gave it enough time when I first tried it, but it was really early in. So maybe that's why it, it yeah, because I, I think it, when it was we played it even just... before. I think it was even before they added the arachnophobia mode. Oh yeah, oh, way wow. before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we played it even before that, like when it first released. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it was just never, never stuck with us. But I feel like I, I want to give it another shot. I respect it. Next up, we have Arabin Shadow Legacy. I am into this. I think I'm the only one that kind of am interested in this game. A very stealthy, shadowy game. It looks like you are literally able to meld with the shadows. Uh, it's prescribed uh, in a way that is called a stabby cyber stealth M up game. So it looks like you'll be killing a lot of people just stealthily. Um, and, and whoa, what does this mean? It is in a setting what appears to be a north african inspired world interesting huh that is from pc gamer i can't tell if that's a from a pr article that sounds like the actual writer expressing that but mm. uh that it does have an interesting aesthetic i i don't even know how to say what a north african looks like so i i can't describe that but it looks great uh it looks like you're uh playing a stealth game and honestly i miss well crafted stealth games i Alex, you brought up Origami as very yep. similar to this game, and I agree. I hope it's a little more kinetic, maybe, is the word well, I want to use. I'm not origami, too sure, but... I think Origami was more... I can't remember, but I think it was more level-based. Mm. I don't know if this is level-based as well. I have no idea. It doesn't really seem to say. It looks from... level-based. It's, it's giving me uh, Ghost Runner vibes as far as level design. Ah, that's yeah. a good. That's a good yeah. way of saying it. It's uh, all right. This is this fucking you, Emmett. This person brings up. It looks a lot like <laughs> Blood Rain. <laughs> Emmett wrote this. Wow. <laughs> Emmett wrote this good fucking God. article. <laughs> that is. <laughs> If only. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like there's too, honestly, too much about this. Uh, it's published by Raw Fury, like Emmett said, and Baby Robots developing the game. It looks cool. I can't wait to see more about it, uh, but we don't know too, too much about when it's coming, do we? Mm, 2023, that's all we know. So I will have to come back to this. Hopefully I don't forget it, like half of the games um, from these showcases. I just forget and never play them. Hopefully this comes back out and I'm like, oh, I remember this. Let me try it. Uh, anything else from you two? If not, I'm moving on. Uh, looks interesting. I'm not the biggest stealth person. I like I like stealth games where I can still just kill everyone if I'm seen. Um, <laughs> this does not seem like that type of game. Uh, but interesting art style, interesting aesthetic. I, I have a feeling like it's gonna be whether or not it plays like Origami. I think it's gonna be in that same tier. I think people are gonna look at it in yeah. the same way. Um, but. Here's hoping that it has double like, A kind of game, right? Yeah, definitely double yeah. A. Some it's it's Game Pass fodder, uh, but good Game Pass fodder. Like you know, sounds like an insult. Like. I don't really take it as that. I mean, it's it's a it's a. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like you had a, a Game Pass quickie, is what you said. Yeah. It meant we call them drive by games, where yeah. you spend a good weekend on it. Yeah, um, exactly. Uh, but but yeah, I I agree. This will be something we pick up, we play a little bit, and. 
bow out oh for sure next up we got and i'm sure a lot of people pop for this diablo 4 uh they announced the release date of 2023 so we don't have too much about the release date but they are saying it's relaunching this year it's diablo 4 looks like diablo to me looks great it looks really good it, i the first off the diablo aesthetic is pretty set in stone it's these very dark demon skulls mm-hmm. killing they showed off the necromancer class which is i if i remember correctly like a very popular class in when they re-released diablo uh diablo I forget, 2? I forget, and diablo i think it was diablo 3 that had the expansion Oh, that they for re- consoles, yeah, for consoles. Thank you. And yeah. uh, that apparently that was huge for that game because people love the Necromancer. So I think this popped up for a lot of Diablo fans. Yeah, I've always heard Necromancer was like the like the most favorite like class to use. Hmm. Yeah, it looks the most fun because I think I, well, I think it's also like sometimes like super broken, too, because I remember reading something that was like, oh, if you want uh, an easy time, just play Necromancer and summon things and they'll kill them for you. But yeah, I'm excited for it. I know Emmett, you're not too, too high on this. I, I'm. I will play this the day it comes out. I don't expect it to come out anytime soon, though. Yeah, I, I mean, this is just like I know that exactly the type of game it is. Uh, I said earlier on the stream, I played a lot of Torchlight Two, so it's going to be similar to that. On paper, I should be super excited. I'm sure that if I played it, I would love it. But nothing. I just that type of game. This isn't even a slight against Diablo. It's just a Diablo like. I don't really have a taste or hunger for right now um maybe if i do by the time 2023 comes around perhaps i'll want to jump in but yeah that just just that whole mindless podcast type game loot system just grind just doesn't seem fun to me right now but uh i acknowledge that it looks really nice and diablo is that game like like a lot of people Mm -hmm. are like yeah once you hit i think it's level 60 in diablo or something like that's when the game starts i'm like Nah, I'm not gonna play for that long. <laughs> like, I'm not a big guy that's like, yeah, if you put in 20 hours, it, the game gets really good. I'm like, I don't think well, I want to do Final that. Fan? <laughs> <laughs> Final Fantasy fan, <laughs> don't worry, it gets great 60 hours in. I'm like, Whoa. I liked that game, and I still wouldn't say that. Jesus, well, I'll beat three games by the time it's good. So. <laughs> Emmett's already refinished half of his PS1 games that he loves. Exactly. I can filter, played through six times. This, <laughs> it is. This next one is literally a Sea of Thieves update. I have nothing to say about this. It looks cool. Sea of Thieves fan, I'm sure, are freaking out. You can save loadouts. You got to customize your cabin. All these things that I'm sure a lot of people love. And I think it's awesome. I don't play Sea of Thieves, so I can't say too much. It's coming July 21st. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. I need to finish the Pirate's Life. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. still need to do Pirates of the Caribbean thing that they, were, that they released. Yeah. This next one, Ravenlock. Coming 2023... This looks pretty good. I need to get some more information because this does not have a blog post, but I liked the kind of aesthetic it was going for. Is it... This is one of the games where we didn't see too much, so I can't really say a oh, whole lot about it. Oh, this one. I was excited for this one. Yes, you popped really high for this. What did you think? Um, yeah, this one, because I forget the name. Oh, wow. I went to ravenlot.com. Do not go there. It's oh. just a bunch of random pictures of knives, and I don't know what the hell that is. Um, <laughs> but Ravenlock. That's better uh, than what I thought you were going to say. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. anything explicit, just weird. I did think um, it was going to go in a slightly different. Yeah, like <laughs> thankfully, nothing horrible. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Ravenlock from the developers of Echo Generation, where. Thank you. I'm trying to find it. It's so hard yes. to find this game. Yeah, Echo Generation is a game that I saw it was turn based and I instantly got turned off, but the visual style of it looked super interesting. And this seems to be a more direct action based type of title the art style looks really cool it's like minecraft with more detail is the best way i can say it where it has that chunky pixel based art style but then certain things are like fully drawn instead of chunky uh and you know here or there it's it's, di- it's dipping into different like aesthetics like it, it gave heavy uh alice in wonderland vibes but not everything go- was like i'm gonna stop you stuff. right there Oh, Arthur yes. Damien from the escapismagazine.com shows the aesthetics of a Alice in Wonderland, <laughs> but more realistic graphics. <laughs> dude, brain cell. dude, what in the hell? <laughs> um, Alex, yeah. I know you have to leave. I know you have to leave soon. What, do you have any thoughts on Ravenlock? It looks it looks fun. I like I like how I like the art. Uh, like I like what Evan said, the Alice in Wonderland. I've played that game in that, and it gives me that resemblance as well. Yeah, it looks um, it looks yeah. kind of cool. It's described um, 
as a fairy tale coming of age adventure. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, I dig it. The uh ravenlock accidentally makes her way to a troubled kingdom when she stumbles through a magical mirror the caterpillar queen reigns with an iron fist and it's up to ravenlock to put an end to her rule and restore peace to the land it's alice in wonderland <laughs> like if, oh yeah verbatim almost pretty much <laughs> that is for, almost verbatim the game so uh next up is i believe cocoon this uh, i'm blanking on this one this is another one i'm gonna have to look up this I remember being like, oh, this looks cool, but I do have to get a quick blog post. Again, another game that does not have a blog post. Uh, yeah, this is it from Limbo great. and the Inside Developer, the, the yes. main insider. It's coming to Game Pass uh, in 2023, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and PC. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, this is the one where it had that very cool, you pick up an orb and you're like going inside the orb with the orb. It looked really crazy. I think it's Inception stuff. Yeah, it will. And uh, Evan uh, said inside out like, which I'm like, yeah, that's not a bad a, a thing with like the memories yeah. inside the circle kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they say it's like cosmic mystery. I'm trying to see. It's being worked down. Jeff Carps. And yeah, it doesn't look like we know too much about the game aside from what we saw. Looks like a yeah. kind of weird sci-fi type game. Yeah, big uh, Monument Valley energy from the art. Oh style. yeah, that's a yes. Um, that's a great, great way of explaining it. So yeah, I'm very, I'm, I'm interested in that one. Once again, I'm gonna keep an eye out for it. It's, it seems like it's more puzzled and platformer, which usually turns me off. But it looks so pretty that I'm definitely gonna be looking out for it. Next up, Wulong. Nothing to say about this game. It looks weird. We all thought it was Neo 3 for literally the entire time it was on the screen. And then it said it was Hulong. Uh looks creepy. Looks like honestly like yeah. Neo. So, yeah, if anything, me and Ember were more excited for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything to say. Do you do you gentlemen want to take this one? I'll let you go. I mean, I'm hoping it's just I mean I'm hoping it's simpler than Neo. Like, you know, the level uh, like mission to mission, you know, the comp dark souls souls like combat, you know. I just uh, I hope it has more of a the thing with neo is like the con the the story is just it was just it was hard to follow every once in a while it's like i'm hoping this is has more of a fluid uh story and that's what it seems like that giant vampire caterpillar monster thing looks creepy <laughs> oh that's all i gotta say about it yeah really yeah i'm i just hope it plays like ninja gaiden because those are the the yeah ninja games that i like so if it does great if not uh I'll try out Neo. Neo was kind of fun when I played it, so. It's happening. You'll never see it coming. Persona oh. 5. Royal, Persona 4 Golden, and Persona 3 Portable are finally coming to Xbox One, Xbox Series X, Windows PC, and Xbox Game Pass starting this fall. October 21st is when we will join Joker in Persona 5 Royal, also available with Game Pass and all the things previously stated. This was told to me will never happen I, Emmett, i've had people tell me <laughs> to my face this will never happen i've heard rumor after rumor for like two years that this was happening and i kept saying like this i think it's true the guy i don't remember who said it now it's so long ago now but the dude was pretty credible and he was right about i think i think about what he, i think he was right about the kingdom hearts collection or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and the yeah. guy also leaked that Persona 5 Royal was coming. Was he right or not? I don't know. Clearly, he I, he was eventually right. I don't know if he was right back then. But it it's... I, I lost words. I can't wait for this to come. I am yeah. a huge Persona f f fan. I love 5 yes. Royal. I love Golden. I've never played actually Persona 3. So this will be my first time going into that game. I heard it's fantastic. So I will be playing literally all of this. I will replay Persona 5 Royal. I've beaten that game like twice now. I will be going back to that. I will be playing Persona 4 Golden again. I will be playing Persona 4 3 Portable for the first time. And I am ecstatic for this. This this was the biggest pop for at least me. This is the biggest like me announcement. Like my favorite platform being Xbox and my one of my favorite games of all time, Persona 5 Royal, coming to the service is super exciting. So it kills me because we were just talking about this that I wanted to go back to Persona 4 Golden on my Vita. Yes, we were literally and yesterday because I on, on the show I brought, up, I brought up my Vita like I brought I brought my Vita back out to play it's some right games here. and Alex was. Oh, here oh, we go. Here oh. we go. There we go. We're in good company. <laughs> we're in good there company, go. ladies and gentlemen. Here. Here lives. <laughs> and hey, all different colors, too. Hey, but the like Captain, <laughs> like Captain Planet, our colors combined. Is that what he said? Probably. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll ask Dr. Uh, Doodle. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have gushed enough. Alex, again, I know you have to leave soon, so I want to go to you first. What do yes. you have to say? Um, well, my thing is, when do you think... Because th- five are getting in October. When yes. do you think we're getting three and four? Because... Are you, should I wait to play for Golden until this comes out, or do you think we have long enough to where it won't it won't drown it won't drown it? I I I think it's an interesting that Persona Five Royal is coming first. It's first, so clearly yeah. there's a contract the thing happening. Issue? I would assume Persona Four Golden would have been the most ready. It just recently That's got a thought. PC port. I thought that'd be ready yeah. to go. I'm surprised Persona Five Royal is the first one coming. So honestly, I couldn't tell you. I wouldn't be shocked. It, it technically it says starting this fall, so that doesn't say the deadline for these games. Yeah. So I, would I, say I don't think we can even guess. I think five's the most accessible one. You get all the fans in the door, then they can go back and play because they're not directly connected. I don't believe. So. No, no, not at all. I don't believe. Exactly. So then you get four, then you get three. I feel like they're not going to wait too long. I don't think it's going to be two years later, and then three's finally out. I yeah. think probably by the end of 20 i bet by by the fall all of them will be out by fall if i play four now and then do you think I, it wouldn't be too much like like i i wanted to give it at least six months in six months do you think four will come out on xbox or it'll be more than six months i think six months six after mo- the release date of five yeah. yes yes i think okay. i agree cool. with that man. i think time. i think six months we, uh, by cool. that time four would also be out got it cool so i'm gonna start four <laughs> again i'll say it again it's kind of weird. Golden isn't already stated. I'm I'm assuming there might be a Steam deal, maybe, or maybe it really nah. just takes some some time to port the game. I bet it's I, Xbox wanting to stretch out this wealth over their quarters to cover, you know, different spots. That's a good point. It probably is that. It's just so strange. And they're two massive games. I you don't want them anywhere close to each other, probably. So mm-hmm. I understand that. It's just strange that Royals first. But again, I think Emmett's correct. By far the most popular of all the series. The only one I've touched. <laughs> like, <laughs> come on. Well, as a not super Persona fan, yeah, you're not huge into Xbox, but like, does this? Are you gonna play this, or you're still like, yeah, you, you're you're gonna admire it from afar? I mean, I'm not gonna admire it from afar. I do at some point. I do want to go back to Persona because I was enjoying my time with Royal. Um, I, I think it's a great game. I think it has great art design, pretty interesting story. I got 17 hours into Persona 5 Royal. Oh, so well, one tenth of the game. Exactly. <laughs> when, I hit, when I hit hour 20, I was like, I have to be far in this game. Nope. I beat the game with 90 something hours. Yep. Christ. Yes. When I, right. when I, like, we platinumed it. So that's what it was. To platinum it, I did 90 something hours. My Persona 5 playthrough was 105. My Persona 5 Royal playthrough, because I had known the game already, was 86 or something like that. So I was able to shave off 20 hours, but that was fucking, that's it. <laughs> yeah, and that's because so. I had beaten the game already. So <laughs> that's the only reason. I'll, I'll say this announcement doesn't invigorate me to go back to Royal instantly now. Uh, I do still want to go back to it at some point, but that doesn't really rejuvenate me. It does make me happy that I think for a long time, I feel like we've needed some equity when it came to these PlayStation exclusives versus the Xbox exclusives, where there's a lot of like de facto PlayStation exclusives that like Sony isn't paying for. And this is one of them. Yeah. Where I'm glad we're finally getting it on Xbox so that they can see what's up with this. What's next? Say again? <sighs> What's ne- what's next? Which one? Which one's next? Well, shoot, Dragon Quest, I would hope, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon because I don't think they have really an inkling to pet port their past games. They they just haven't shown that they honestly care. Half of their games yeah. are on 3DS. Fucking A. I mean, <laughs> really, at this point, we've got just about all of them. Kingdom Hearts has come over. Yakuza's come yeah, over. The major yeah. over. Japanese franchises. Yeah. Now, now you need to work on current ones that are coming out, and I I wouldn't be shocked if they're still behind on that. But I hope this is a sign of. From this point on, we will be sure to incentivize these Japanese developers to start launching on our platforms. Because mm-hmm. if you're if you're on PS5, almost no reason to not be on Xbox at this point. Like unless yeah. you are being paid exclusivity, which I wouldn't be shocked if Persona or PlayStation was signing a check for Atlas as a agreement yeah. that like, hey, don't put this anywhere else. Because yeah, there's no reason they shouldn't be on PC. Uh, mm-hmm. So. I, I wouldn't be shocked if that was if that was paid for, and they probably it probably ended probably a couple months ago, and they were finally able to be like, yeah, let's let's get these guys. Let's, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, this is a quick one. I don't have anything much to say. This is Hideo Kojima kind of came out, and they acknowledged, yeah, we're working together. 
Yeah. That's it. I didn't know by, this was kind of a sign of more than anything. This was more spiritual than like, yeah, we got the fucking PlayStation guy. So yeah. we're cool now. Like, I feel like that was very much this kind of statement. Like, Death Stranding have, 2, Xbox exclusive. We don't have anything to say other than Hideo Kojima is working on a game for us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I asked you during the stream, Emmett, um, Alex, I don't think you, you actually, you might have, I think I sent you the, the leak. Do you guys think this is overdose? I think it is. I think it might be. And I think there's a small chance that they took out the trailer because it got leaked and because it, it got leaked. Really? I think there's a small chance of that mm. from the from looking at the conference. I feel like maybe that's just what they had, and he wants to save that reveal for maybe the uh, the Jeff Keighley thing that happens at the end of the summer, the one night live op- or something, opening night live, something like that. Yeah, I think well, you, well, we get the we get the uh, EXO as well. Yeah, if they too. do EXO event, yeah, that is true. Um, they could save it for that. It's not a terrible idea. Um, I, uh, yeah. I'm glad they're working on it. I'll say it again. I cannot believe PlayStation let this go. This reminds me of the MLB thing wow. where like, not only did you lose MLB, you lost marketing to MLB. Like, like it's wild that we saw baseball games, MLB the show. And right after it was saying fucking Xbox and didn't say PlayStation. That is fucking crazy to me. Well, and this is another example of how strange that like, how, did, how does he not have a blank check? This is the guy that made fucking Metal Gear. Like, how I'll, do you not I'll keep this guy this stated quick. on your on your uh, I, I, I at least ask myself that if I'm CEO, if I'm uh, Jim Ryan chilling and I'm like, yeah, we probably need to lock this dude down. I'll say I'll say this real quick because I we really need to get to this last one. We do. Um, I feel like there is a big cutoff that happened because we remember Fortnite was cross play on everything except PlayStation and they had their whole debacle and their whole falling out and readjusting their corporate brain to go to this current life cycle of cross-gen everything, cross-buy everything. Everything is everywhere all at once. Uh, great movie, by the way. Yeah, um, I still want to watch it. It's, it seems yeah. so cool. Oh, so fucking good. But um, yeah, we're, we're in that environment now. And I think PlayStation understands that. They're putting Spider-Man on PC at this point, which was unheard of back in the day. They've already changed in a way where they understand, hey, MLB, we understand the baseball league wants more money let them put it other places but we still develop the game so we still get that check yeah. um for for kojima That's true. they're not developing the game but people will still associate kojima with playstation whenever he does put something on there so they're still getting that slight brand recognition even when it's on xbox they're gonna think oh can i get it on play oh it's not on playstation they have that roadblock because they've already set that history um even if you know they go over to xbox to play it but We'll see what happens here. Um, I think it's going to be a good game, whatever it is. Kojima doesn't make complete duds. I know Death Stranding. How in fucking it. weird they are. I mean, they're still good. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So he's going to make something decent at the very least. All right, we've waited long enough. We're going to jump into this one. I and uh, Alex, we're going to start with you because I know we're we're uh, yes. razor's edge right now. Starfield yep. 2023. We got an extensive look at what the game's going to look like. We got some gameplay. We got some gunplay. We got some flight play. Is that what it's called? I don't know. Play, we play. we got we got some uh, customization play. We got all we got all the gambits. We got basically <laughs> what the game seems like it is going to be, and it doesn't seem like any of us are super excited. Alex, starting with you, Starfield so, thoughts. I think this is for a certain audience. This game is like you know, it's like. Like, you know, not everybody likes Fallout. Not everybody, uh, you know, I mean, does everybody love Elder Scrolls? I think it's I think it's one of those things where, like, you know, it looks cool, but I think it looks like it's, it was trying to do, like, there's a little bit of everything for everyone. So it's like, oh, for the people who like mining and, you know, stuff like No Man's Sky, here's a little bit. Here's a first person shooters, you know, for Fallout or, you know, first person shooter people. Third person for exploration flight simulating you know in space it it's a little bit for everybody i just i just hope that they they don't try too hard to get everybody cuz i feel like this game is just going to be specifically for ni- like like niche people to where like mm. i like there's certain aspects like with the um, with making your own fort or the ship not everybody's going to do that no. that's going to only certain people are going to use that and i just hope that because not everybody's going to use it I hope that they don't. It it doesn't drown it. 
but I, I kind of enjoyed what I saw. I just, I'm just, I don't want to give it too high hopes in case it's broken. Yeah. Because so everything you, I, I saw, it looks awesome. So it sounds like you're tempering your expectations because of past games. Is that, is that kind of where you're sitting? A little bit, at? yeah. Okay. I don't think that's crazy, especially given Bethesda's track. I mean, I get to be fair, well, look at the last games we've got from Bethesda. That's true. Seven, I mean, six, Fallout, Fallout 76, four. yeah, Fallout 4. Yeah. Fallout 4 wasn't bad, but it was Fallout 3. It was so. bad, yeah. Yeah. It was Fallout, sorry, it was Fallout 3 with the ability to make a town. So yeah, you know, do what you will with that. Um, I will take it, and then I want to end with Emmett because I feel like you are the most. I think I, 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 <laughs> I, mean, I think you're almost. I don't know. The target audience isn't the right word I want to see, but like, the are you a huge? Like are you a huge action RPG guy? I want to. I want to say, are you? I'm are you a huge Fallout RPG Three? Guy. Are you? Did you love Fallout Three, Skyrim, all that? Uh, Fallout 3 is in my top 100. Skyrim is even higher in my top 100. Okay, so I was, 4, I was incorrect. I, I was going to say I was gonna say you're almost like the least interested in this, but that's clearly uh, incorrect. So I will... I should be interested in this. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, so actually... See, that's the thing. See, that's the yeah. thing. It, it's trying... Like, you should be because it should pit everybody, but you might not be. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I... I actually, yeah, I want to end with Emmett now because... Yeah, that's yeah, fine. yeah, yeah. Because he's about to fucking light a match and throw it in in, in gasoline, oh, and I want to hear that. So I'm going to probably set Emmett up here. Starfield yeah. looks exactly what I thought in a vacuum that Bethesda makes games. If we remember, Fallout Four came around the same time as Witcher Three did, and Witcher Three fucking beat the shit out of Fallout Four in terms of almost everything: exploration, character development, character interactions. The only thing it didn't really nail, you could argue, is maybe companionship. And I think Triss and Yennefer fucking throw like them out of the water for that. So they got upstaged in what they did in the year the game came out. So that's what I want to paint the Bethesda picture with. I think Bethesda makes games in vacuums, and it comes to their detriment i think they have figured out a flow with their games and we can look at it with fallout 3 we can look at it with elder scrolls i feel like if you even show someone who's not very into games if i maybe showed my wife these three games i feel like she would even guess that the same person made them because they have the same feeling to almost all of them you can almost tell that the same person made all of these games i say person lightly the same uh bible developer, almost yeah. developer yeah they, they all have these kind of bibles that they follow i feel like this is clearly made by the same developer bible for better and for worse it looks like it is fallout in space <laughs> that's what it looks like it looks like and i think everyone thought this is going to be bethesda's evolution this is going to be what's an example that i can think of off the top of my head this is going to be half-life one to two <laughs> yeah this is going to be the fallout set or so, right? sorry not fallout seven the final fantasy seven of the yeah. Final Fantasy franchise. This is going to be the giant evolution that propels Bethesda into GTA this, 3. into what Witcher 3 was. And people who didn't play games kind of play the game because it was it was a big deal. And uh, Alex, you, you leaving? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah sorry. I got to catch you, but I got to get, um, gotta get the babes. Yeah, you, you, you got a kid. Hey, you do, you, you, bro. Yeah. We appreciate you. Right. I will try to get you That's later for a little snippet. Yep. Um, we'll attach it to the end of the video. Yep. Good, good, good talk, guys. Oh, All always. Right. I'll see you later, man. Thank you. See you. I'm going to switch scenes here. There we go. It's just you and me now, baby. Excellent. Uh, going back to what I was saying, yeah, I think I think we know what we're seeing with this. It's Bethesda making a game, and I, and I do think a lot of people kind of hype themselves up with this. We And I think I did, too. I, I think I thought this was going to be something that's different, and I think we can say pretty equivocally now, it isn't. It yeah. looks like it's taking... No Man's Sky's approach to crafting things. It looks like it's taking almost No Man's Sky's approach to flying too, as well. Um, I do, th- I do think it got your interest with what they did at the end there. And I was like, "All right, well, this is one system. You can go to all the plants, but guess what? Scope. We have a hundred different things you can do. Oh my god! Different- oh, there's a million places now you can go. And immediately, yeah. what I went is okay. It's procedurally generated. And then you immediately countered with like, hey, it might not be." As Proceed Jedi is something like No Man's Sky, I think I agree with you with that. Um, I think it isn't terrible to say because I think they will have, like you said, 
these kind of main set piece places that you'll have this mission that you have to go on to fucking Xeno 75 and meet this robot man that will tell you how he murdered his entire family or whatever the hell. So mm-hmm. I I agree with you in that perspective. I just think we are in we are probably getting Fallout in space. And for some people that's great. For some people that's not good enough. For some people they're going to be disappointed but they're still going to play the game. With all that being said, I want you to fucking start that match and I want you to throw it at me, please. <laughs> all right. I will I'll start with this. I remember watching a video about Fallout 76, a positive video about Fallout 76 from Noah Caldwell Gervais. I think I watched this exact same video. Yes. Pretty sure it's a great video. He is a great writer in general, blah, blah, blah. Yes. His main thesis on yeah, his main thesis on that Fallout 76 video was that Fallout 76 was fun if you treated it like a theme park rather than an actual lived-in world. It was fun to just watch the bells and whistles of Fallout ring every time you got leveled up and all that stuff. And that was fun. Looking at this game, Starfield here, because when I saw that 76 video, I totally agreed with his thesis there, and I find that game fun in the same way. Starfield seems like, what if we took that methodology, that mindset of game development, okay. and, and stretched it all the way to an original concept to where I say that because the thing about Starfield, it feels like Elix. <laughs> If you know the Elix games, and I know that seems like the biggest burn, but I don't mean to say that because Elix, if you've ever heard of Elix, that's like a, I want to say teach Nordic joint. It is. Yeah. The second Uh, one came out recently too, I think. Yes, it did. And I was very, I wasn't excited for it, but I was interested to see if they would change things and they didn't really change all that much. But yes, the thing about those games are they are janky as all hell. They are fucking weird in a lot of ways. They're bizarrely difficult. But they have an interesting world. They have an interesting aesthetic. But the thing about it is that some of the parts of that aesthetic feel generic. Starfield feels so generic in a way that I'm like, I am surprised that because what do I love Bethesda for? I love it for Fallout. Fallout is such a very specific world. There's nothing like Fallout with that combination of, you know, destroyed world versus the 1950s aesthetic. No other game has that. You go to Skyrim uh, or Elder Scrolls in general. I will say Skyrim feels a little bit more generic just because it's that very much so the classical fantasy. Yeah, it's just it's the fantasy. They have yeah. caves. There's vampires. Exactly. Werewolves. Like just there's nothing too special about it, but it is special to me because I don't play a lot of fantasy games, so that's a little bit more novel for me. And also, let's um, remember that came out in the PS3 360. Era. Yeah, that wasn't Skyrim really was being done. That wasn't really being done back then. And if it was, it was not to its... It wasn't as accessible in- back then. Because there were games like that, but it was the Dragon Age Origins. Where that, it was very that's what hard I'm saying, though. Like, yeah. If you say it's been done back then, it wasn't being done to that extent. There were mm-hmm. no items that you could... You couldn't pick up cheese from fucking table. You couldn't pick exactly. everything up. Not The the entire world was not interactive or interactable. Yeah. This, it so- wasn't accessible and blockbustery in the way... Like It's like Lord of the Rings. Like Lord of the Rings, that was an accessible-ass movie that anybody could watch. But before that, it was like these very weirdly hardcore yeah. types of things there for fantasy. So that that's on that side. We get to Starfield. I have played so many science fiction games. This is the most sterile. This is the most, I can't even tell. Like when you have a handmade product versus a factory made product, you can tell because the stitches don't line up perfectly. Yep. You can tell like there's wear and tear on things. There's weird like aspects to it. You could tell the uniqueness. Yes, you could tell the uniqueness of it. Starfield feels so sterile. It feels like it is made in a factory. Yep. It feels like here's our here's our world. Here's the here's the combat. Here we're checking off all the boxes. Here's we your hi- style. We hi- we like hired that. a thousand different people to uh, what's it called like workshop. Uh, mm-hmm. 10,000 people who play video games and Bro. we got the highest percentage that agree that they like guns that shoot lasers. Okay, all right, so we're going to put mm-hmm. lasers in this guy. Oh, you like double barrel shotguns? All right, well, there's going to be a double barrel shotgun that looks the exact same that a double barrel shotgun does, but except this one looks more futuristic. Yeah. Like that's that is I almost agree with you. You could tell this Almost is it's been focus group to hell. They fucking focus it. group the shit. It was man. over. It was over strike and now it's fused. But yes. I don't know if it ever was over strike to was begin it? with. We don't know. <laughs> we'll never know that answer. We'll exactly. never know that. But we know right now that this thing looks like 
it looks like it looks like a well, video game and it looks to, like a good video game according to the graph 80 <laughs> percent of the audience does like when you fly in a ship so we're gonna yeah. put ships flying in this game we also understand that people like no man's sky because of the exploration so we're gonna do just that <laughs> in the exact same way seemingly yeah and according to this chart like that's that's what it feels like it mm -hmm. it looks i think you put it well it looks sterile it doesn't really look like it's learned anything yeah it looks like it is a bethesda game in space for better like when I, for worse for less for not i don't know exactly i when i compared it to boundary during the live stream like i was looking at boundary that is straight up literally just zero gravity call of duty what on space stations and what you when you think of that concept you're not thinking of oh what's the cool aesthetic that makes it different no it's pretty sterile in yeah. the way that call of duty games often are and that's fine for a multiplayer game where all you're doing is finding the dot and clicking it if i'm gonna have a story that's gonna engross me characters that are gonna engross me all that stuff I need it from something that isn't so on the face of it at the very least, so sterile, so of every other type of sci-fi out there. Nothing about this game is really speaking to me in that way where it's like, oh, this is going to be an adventure. This is going to be a new story or just a new thing that I will be seeing. I am sure that I don't know if I'm I mean, it's on Game Pass, so I'll probably give it a go anyway, since I want to pay for oh, it. Oh, let's let's be honest. We're all playing this game. Yeah, we're just yeah. we are judging what we are seeing for what we're exactly. seeing. I'm not very positive on it. Mm -hmm. um, will I play it? Of course I will. It's on Game Pass. It's going to be a seminal title. Fuck, I'm probably going to do a spoiler cast on it too. You know why? Because it's kind of my job. I want to do it. But, yeah. <laughs> but to critique Bethesda a little bit, I do not see the evolution that I wanted to see. I don't see what I love. I uh, do. I do, but I'm going to come back to you after. Okay, please do. Because mm -hmm. what, what I think of evolution, this was something I brought up with Naughty Dog um, with uh, The Last of Us uh, Part 1 remake. I brought up, people were kind of complaining about the price point. And I was like, look, I will happily spend $70 because you know why? And I brought up Naughty Dog's full fucking discography of the games that they've made. I was like, these people made Uncharted 1 and 3. By the way, when they were making Uncharted 3, they were making Last of Us 1. These two games, one of the best games ever made. I'll give them fucking $100 for this game. I don't give a shit because it's Naughty Dog. I want them to make sure mm -hmm. they stay on my games. I don't want them going to do anything else. So I'll clear, gladly spend $70 on this game. When I bring up Uncharted 1, 2, 3... It almost, uh, sorry, Uncharted 1, 2, 3, Last of Us, uh, Crash Bandicoot, it paints this beautiful picture of an evolution throughout this company's lifespan. When I bring up Bethesda and I show you Skyrim, Fallout 4, 3, in this game, the only thing that's going to tell you which one came first is probably the graphics. And Skyrim yeah. is going to be harder because it's been released 70 times. So... <laughs> What I want to say to that is it's very hard to s tell me gameplay wise, aesthetics and uh, I mean, hell, it, it looks like the exact same way you're interacting with people is the same way you're zooming in on their face. There's a very kind of guy standing like this and he's going to be talking like this the entire time. I am an NPC in Skyrim. Yeah, like that's like <laughs> that rack zoom. Yes, the rack. Yeah, the sink. <laughs> what is your story, young man? <laughs> and that does not excite me. But I want to hear your pushback on this. Doesn't show the evolution of Bethesda. I, 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 please, I, I would love that. What 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 was your kind of uh, issue with that? I feel like the evolution of Bethesda is this. Now, of course, they've been making games since like what? 90s, oh my god! 90s. I think I, late eighties. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like in that early time period, they were trying to figure out just the mechanics, just the hardcore, hardwired basics of the game. Forget story, forget narratives, forget characters, forget anything that you can have an artistic opinion about. Just the mechanics is what they've been working on. And I feel like around like Oblivion slash Fallout 3 era, they finally honed in what the mechanics are, what the mechanics need to be. And they've kept that consistent throughout all their products. What I've been seeing as someone whose Bethesda experience started with Fallout 3, what it seems like I'm seeing as we get further and further down the line with Bethesda, um, it's less about what artistically is interesting and more about what content is going to keep you playing. I think that's why Fallout 76, for as much of a meat grinder of a game that was for the developers, I think that's why that idea stuck out to them as a good idea because they're like, all right, people like Fallout. How much more content can they give them? I feel like Starfield is a game full of content. 
I don't know if any of that is full of stories. I don't know if any of that is full of character. I don't know if any of that is full of like water cooler moments that I want to talk about outside of like, oh, I found some titanium ore on planet Venus. Like it seems like it's just content. It's just a bunch of shit to keep you playing. And because I as soon as I saw the ship creation tools where it looked like Kerbal Space Program and you're just building the ship, that's remarkable if you just want a very dry, very that's amazing sim. I don't want a dry standard space sim. I want same here. I I want something creative. That's why I like we talked about Scorn earlier in the podcast. Scorn looks cool because it is something I can't believe someone thought of that. Everyone's thought of Starfield. <laughs> Everyone's had those same ideas, those same concepts in their head, and now it's just being realized in 4K. So like I that doesn't excite me as much. I will still be trying it out because at the end of the day, it's Bethesda. They've made some of my favorite games of all time. But right now. It feels generic. It feels like content for content's sake. And when they flex the whole, oh, we have a thousand planets. I'm that like, immediately turned me off, man. That immediately it, yeah. turned me off. I'm like, but that mm-hmm. tells me you didn't go in and personalize that. Like, I yes, exactly. I don't care how much you have. I want to know how much work is in this. Red Dead 2 is a prime example of that. Look, if you want to be a fucking psychopath and pretend like you're a cowboy, you can. And that's amazing. And that is a great experience. Every single particle in that fucking game shows someone looked at it. Mm-hmm. And it's huge. And it's a testament to how much Rockstar has fucking money. <laughs> like they can just do whatever they want. <laughs> and I don't and I'm saying Bethesda needs to do that, but I don't care how much content you have. This goes back to the Dying Light 2 thing and why they got in so much trouble. When they were like, we're five times as long as blah blah blah. And we're lying because we want a I don't know, long game hours. I don't know why they did that. But people see that and they're like, oh, that's worth worth the money. Like oh, that sounds like that. 2010 like, talk. That was yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah, that was a big deal. Now, you who the this fuck cares? Game. You're no. getting a free game pass. <laughs> it's like, so that's so that is so, such a strange. This is a weird mm-hmm. flex that again, in 2010, you tell me, bro, there's a thousand planets you can go to. And I'm like, really, fam? Oh, my God. But let now me, we, let me listen to this Eminem album and I'll be right there with you, bro. Exactly. Like, let me fucking play some shit. And but now we're at the point where when we hear the promise of, oh, this thing is super wide, we know it's shallow because we know the human you. cost it takes to fill all that space. <laughs> yeah. You didn't spend 20 fucking years making this game, bro. And also, like, mm-hmm. this is huge. No, they're not. No, no, they're, yeah. they're not rock star. Like, it, it, it's just it's not possible for them to to make a thousand worlds and it being and it feel like it's being it's being lived in touched or or modeled yeah. to a point where i can like watch it i brought up mass effect one when we were talking about starfield mm-hmm. mass effect one had a similar thing where you can go with a bunch of pants but it was clear that they didn't have the money to make all these things what did they do all right, this square is going to be the same as this planet. Uh, the yeah. mountains are just going to be slightly different. We're going to move this mountain over here. Uh, this mountain's going to go over there. There's probably five planets, but spewed out 20-something odd times. Mm-hmm. That's, like I said, that's great for 2007 when that game came out. That was awesome. It showed you how big games could be. I think we've moved past that, though. I don't think most people are like, dude, the selling point, bro, you can go to a 1,000 planets. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I would rather have, dude, this game is 100 hours, but every single hour is perfected to a T, and there's amazing stories that you can find throughout. There's these side characters that you're going to love. Your, every companion has a very special mission that tells you a little bit about them. You get to experience them. That's the shit I love. Yeah. I don't even, it, every pixel doesn't have to be perfect. I just want that pixel to feel like someone's looked at it. Thank you. That's and, what I mean, man. I don't want, yeah. I don't want, I don't want, what, that sounds like, um, uh, oh, we, we made this AI watch read a thousand batman comics and now this ai yeah, is gonna perfect. make a batman comic and it's just a bunch of fucking garbage and yeah. that's what it kind of feels like it i'm looking at the the demo right now and they and these spots look beautiful uh but i'm imagining this is probably the main hub that i'm gonna be going to and i'll probably mm-hmm. mostly stick to these things and i won't be adventuring too much because after a while that's just gonna get stale regardless of how good the game is I'm telling you right now, because I, I this will instantly get me to delete the game as soon as I come across this, because I know it's going to happen from all the things we've been talking about. The second I get a similar to the quest of Fallout 4, Settlement Needs Your Help, if I get Ooh. Radiant Quest out the wazoo, Ooh. and that's how you get me to explore these thousand planets, Ooh. it's fucking over. And I can just smell it 
from all the way back Yikes. here, and I'm not ready for it. They did say there are like com- like like people like like it's very similar to like New Vegas reputational system kind of thing. I believe in this one. I'm pretty yeah, sure they said that in like a blog post. So yeah, I don't think they would do that. But my God, please! Oh, geez. they are going to do that. I don't. I don't want to be a reputation system into a system I, rather than a story. I don't want to be called by my cousin to go play bowling in this fucking game. I really don't. I don't. Don't grant That's the photo for me. Don't fucking mm-hmm. grant the photo for me, man. All right. It's gonna happen. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I just. I just wanted to be good. <laughs> and look, hey, we shit on the game a lot. Um. Frankly, because I think it deserves it. it. It looks pretty stale. I think I agree with you, Emmett. The skill tree looks like any fucking skill tree in any other game, yeah. man. Like, I don't understand. Like, this is what you had to show, man. Like, this is the way you're going to, like... It halfway looked like Call of Duty, honestly. Bro, like, it looked Call exactly like the badges, and I want to say Call of Duty, um... Yeah. Is it, like, like Black Ops 3 or something like that that had, it's, like, the it's, badges? It's that, and when I talked about Boundary earlier, it's literally the same exact UI design from Boundary. <laughs> like, I can't get over, like, they just, like, I know they didn't copy-paste it, but, like... Yo, the UI artist was like, yo, way. have you guys played Boundary? That shit's awesome. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, my God. I wonder I'm where just, you got the inspiration from. <laughs> yeah, I really wish I wasn't so negative on it because, uh, like, like that, I said, I fucked Bethesda, but... Uh, mm. Dude, dang, you can't help it, man. I, People come for our thoughts, man. This is our thoughts. If yeah. if you want to be super positive, I'm not just going to be super positive on Xbox here, man. I, I I play mostly on Xbox. Shit, I should be the one it's easy to mm-hmm. talk. In. I should be the easy one. I've played Fallout 3, 4, Skyrim. I think I've beaten all those games twice or something like that. Like, I should be the easy guy to win over. If I'm low on it, Jesus. Who yeah. else is going to be low on it? Like, I don't want a cyberpunk, although I'm not saying that's what we're getting. I just I don't want to be disappointed. I don't want to come in this game and be like, fuck, man, like what happened? I will say my final thought on this in the same way where another Noah called Will Gervais vid, he made one about Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk 2077 is the most generic name for a Cyberpunk project you it can is. make because that project was generic. Yeah. And Starfield has a deceptive amount of personality for a name, considering the game is attached to. Yep. We'll see. We'll see if that plays out next year. But God, I I, I am no longer looking forward to that to the same level as I was. Which is hard to say. That is disheartening. I am now not looking forward to Starfield. What the fuck? If you yeah. bro, this morning when I woke up and you come to me and it comes in my house, I'm like, bro, what's up? And you want to make out or you know, whatever we say. <laughs> uh, but when when you come in, he's like, by the way, when this is over, you're gonna be less excited about Starfield. By the way, wasn't even super excited to be in with. I was like, I was happy happy to see the game and i want to play it now i'm like jesus like i'm gonna play this game only because one it's my job and two it's gonna be on game pass like that should not be the the, the feeling i walk away from man like that is disheartening to say at the least yeah, yeah this went from a must play to a wait later <sighs> which is fucking crazy and they almost released this sooner mm, that's what's crazy yeah. to say this almost came out months prior what <laughs> Jeez, I don't want. Okay. I don't want to see the game now. I would hate to. This thing's probably a minefield, or whatever they have it, uh, whatever build they have at the at the here's softworks. Hoping, here's hoping there's more personality, and they just don't want anything spoiled. Maybe they're holding all that back. But this like, could right be an now, early build. Hey, if you, we can lie to ourselves, if we want or something. You know, whatever you want to do, like, like it, it could be true too. Like this could be an early build. They had to show something. They like you could not have come here without showing something. Maybe Felix this? has more personality than this game. That's oh, crazy to say. Sh- oh, sh- that is crazy to say, but I believe that so far. <laughs> like he said it. I didn't think he would, <laughs> but he did. He said oh, it. Oh boy. Anywho. <laughs> On the surface level, I tend to agree. I'll we'll have to see more. And again, maybe this is an early build. Maybe there's uh, maybe there's a secret thing. Maybe the maybe you can mainline it and it's great. We'll never know. The, like I said, the pictures look pretty, but if that's the only thing I could say walking away from it, you fucked up. Something yeah. something went wrong when you were putting together the pieces. Certainly. Emmett, now that we've gone completely through the showcase and we've vented our frustration with this fucking game, what do you grade this as a whole? We kind of did it at the beginning, but this is kind of the let's where let, this is where we're leaving the show. This is where we're gonna kinda like, all right, you know, okay. this is over. What do you think? Now that we've digested it kind of twice now, we've fully gone through each game, we've talked about it. What are your thoughts? Was it good? Was it bad? Do you still have the same kind of thoughts? What is it? Uh, sim- same thoughts that I had at the beginning. Uh, I still think this is like a solid B. Um, not quite B+, plus, but definitely just solid B-flat. Uh, 
I I liked if I didn't like a game that was shown, it was interesting mm-hmm. and it was a game that I could recognize as probably good, even if it wasn't for me. And the stuff that was for me, I'm definitely going to try. Like I can care I can there's like I can count on two hands, maybe even more than two hands, how many games I'm definitely gonna play from this thing. And that's great. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. Games, yeah, games from different genres, different franchises, all that stuff. I'm definitely gonna try a lot of these. Even if I kind of feel like, you know, we talked about Summer Games Fest and how people didn't like the Summer Games Fest presentation. That the last thing got leaked there, so that kind of brought things down a lot. To, uh, as far as like score wise for that presentation, it was so bad. I thought it was. I thought it was fine. I think that was like a C plus, if anything. Where I think everyone else is saying it like it's a fucking D. I don't think that's a fucking case. I think it's a C plus. And I'll say it like this, this is a better way to say it. Kind of funny has their like five point scale where a three is okay, but it's either it's okay or it's okay. I thought it was okay. So that's how I feel about mm. it. I think we're similar, but I'm more yeah. positive about it than because at the end of the day, a plague hit the land. We're lucky to see any of these games. <laughs> Look, hey, I think this I think the quality of these showcases tell you how fucked it is this year. We're not mm-hmm. getting a lot of games this year. And that's just because, like you said, a fucking plague hit. Yeah. One of these years is just gonna have to be affected. This is the year that it gets affected. We're not gonna have a twenty. I don't 2019 or you know what you know a crazy yeah good, we're not gonna have year. a 2017 2017 thank you I can't I can't remember yeah but it, we're you know it's it's just not gonna happen it's fine that mm-hmm. it's I get to play Blackhawk games man I'm fucking happy about that so um uh to to <laughs> to quickly will, put thoughts on on the Jeff Keighley thing though it was yeah, way too right. long that's why it was so bad to me uh, yeah, it was fair. way too long it's two hours that should not have that should have been an hour hour and a half. That was way too long. There was clearly a lot of games there that paid to be there. I get you got to make your money, Jeff Keighley, but not yeah. to the detriment of the product. And a lot of games there were just not good. And you can't show Call of Duty when you just shit on them the year prior. Like, you're, sh- well, they you're showing... on the publisher, not the developer. Yeah, but when you but when you when you pick sides, man, this is the weird thing. When you when you say like, "Hey, I don't like them, but I'll gladly show off their game next year." Like, it's a weird crisscross when you yeah. get into that to that lane. That's why you have to be careful when you do things like that. And and hey, I, I'm not saying he's wrong for that or anything. Like that. I'm just making the observation that, bro, you got to be careful when you talk shit because when you just show their shit the next year, like how am i how do i value your word now i don't know like you didn't back it up with anything you just said something on a stage and didn't even say who it was about yeah that 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 was a little bit weird but i don't know i don't put too much stock into that my Look, my I, thing is like if if jeff wanted to make a better showcase he should have done what xbox did take more advantage of the indies because yeah people were saying yesterday all the indie showcases were taking the heat out of his showcase and I didn't really watch the Day of the Devs thing, but I watched the Devolver Digital thing. I watched the Wholesome Games. I watched the Future Games show. I still need to watch um, uh, Future Games and Wholesome. I think I'm, I'm yeah. I missed those. And there was one more that happened yesterday too. I'm forgetting, but oh, Gorilla Collective. I watched all. Yes, of yeah. And they had some incredible games. And the things that I were popping for at those showcases, those types of games were in this Xbox showcase. Where yes, it trimmed down the size compared to Jeff, Jeff Keeley's thing, but Jeff Keeley was really trying to have here's your Marvel, here's your from the makers of Batman Arkham, here's your like big franchises, big developers, and, and they didn't show anything. Yeah, well, they showed very little. They showed like a cutscene or that's something. That's what I'm saying, but that's nothing to me, man. Like yeah, when, you, when all you have to do is, sh- is is show like this vague CGI trailer or vague cutscenes stitched together, like in Gotham Knights' case, I go, mm-hmm. but why are you here then? For exactly. both sides, why WB Montreal did you come? And Jeff Keighley, why did you why did you agree to this? Because you probably knew what they were going to show you. They were going to show you probably nothing of substance. Because mm-hmm. why? Because you had to fill in the two hours that you needed to fill in. Yeah. Meanwhile, over at Xbox, they got the Flint game that we were talking about. Yes. Which is awesome. Looks but awesome, no one's but... going to be like, oh my god, the guys who made Ashen. There's like two people who might recognize that. Um, but those two got... people fuck. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like you have a lot of these games on here, like like Scorn. We've been talking about that forever. That looks cool. That makes for an interesting showcase because yeah. you're showing people things. Uh Gunfire Reborn. Not everyone's gonna like pop for that the way I did, but it looks interesting. It looks cool. Like there's plenty of things you can show from these smaller developers that are gonna make the showcase feel better as a whole. And that's what Xbox really knew. I think Xbox has long understood the value of indies and just like the B tier of developers. So yeah, they showcased that here. 
Um, the big exciting games, yes, Starfield fell flat, but there were so many good things from other places where the fact that Starfield didn't really deliver too much for me doesn't hurt it too much. Plus, Redfall still kicks ass. So. Yeah, same here, man. When I was so high from Redfall, and then I'll be honest, like I would have been happy if they ended on Persona, but that's just, but that's me. Like mm-hmm. that's because I love that yeah. game. So <laughs> honestly, like persona was like fucking this made it amazing to me lost case of uh benedict fox uh uh pentiment diablo 4 there's a good bit that that when it was here it was great i think i'm a little higher than a b but if it is like a b plus i guess or something i don't know i i think it is a good showcase i think it it, it hurt it. it it got hurt quite a bit because of starfield it ended on a sour note and you just you never want to do that um Aside from Without that, though, Starfield B plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm. I think I finished. Riot Games was huge. I think it was a. I think all in all, it was a, a, amazing showcase for games. But as a critic, I do not think it was great because it did not just have those big splashes. But again, you can't really do both i don't think you can't really have the huge games and then you can't really have a bunch of games for everyone else because logistically i don't think that just works exactly yeah the the plus the 12 month limit kind of cut off a lot of the biggest megatons you could have possibly which had. hey shout out for them they didn't have yeah. to do that that was yeah. primarily i'm assuming through feedback uh i'm i fucking shit on all over them when they did that gameplay showcase mm-hmm. in like last august or something where it was not gameplay at all so (laughs) i was shocked and thank god that that they have uh moved away from that and they're down to the 12 month thing like that was really cool of them i i enjoyed that it it it, hopefully maybe moving forward with with big showcases we can kind of go to that because the last couple years uh showcase meant we're gonna see a lot of cgi trailers and we're not gonna see a lot of people holding controllers i think the only one you could say that doesn't happen would be like playstation when they had their thing back in the day when they had their big showcases so i'm glad we're maybe hopefully coming back to that because i want to see gameplay more than i want to see a couple of cgi trailers yeah fingers crossed yeah well that is the recap of the xbox empathetic game showcase for 2022 Remember, I'm Elijah with the Easy Chavers Game Podcast. We come to you regularly scheduled programming Fridays, every single Friday, early in the morning, 11 p. No, sorry, 11 a.m. Eastern. I always forget the time zones. 11 a.m. Eastern. Emmett Watkins Juniors, please tell me where they can find you. Oh yeah, y'all can find me at EJ Spun61 on all internet places, anywhere. That's pretty much my name anywhere. Uh Twitter's the main part. You could go to Twitter, EJ Spun61. That's where you can find me. Uh VGU.tv is the website. Uh literally later tonight, we're gonna be recording episode 100 of the Players Club podcast. Very excited for that. Congratulations, um, by the way. Thank you. Congratulations. It's, uh, that's a big long milestone. Road. Yeah, it's a massive milestone. It snuck up on me, honestly. Like mm, it did the same for us. We wanted to do something when we were like episode 80. And we we're like, yeah. we should do something for 100. And then 100 came by and we we're like, oh, hey, it was episode 100, by the way. <laughs> we Dude, just I, had, I had plans. I talked to some people. I was going to do something not massive, but kind of big. And then I decided to take a new job. So that's been taking up a lot of my energy and attention. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're still doing something slightly interesting for 100, but it won't be the crazy extravaganza I was planning. But if you want to listen to that, you can go ahead and uh, go to VGU.TV. VGU underscore TV is the Twitter account. We'll tweet about it there. Um, but yeah, I am very much looking forward to recording that. If you want to see my Kendrick Lamar review, I wrote that for VGU. Check that out. I worked really long and hard on that. Uh, and I'm doing a video version of that later this coming week, most likely. And, uh, yeah, that's everything I got. We've been here for a long time talking about Xbox. So v- yes, yes, we have. Oh my God. Two hours. Jesus Christ. Holy yeah. God. I did not know that. Um, yeah, that flew by. I did. I you, when, once you said that, I was like, we haven't been here that long. Fucking A. This is like the longest thing we've ever done. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, remember VGU on podcast services too. Um, uh, YouTube yes. as well. Correct? Yes, YouTube as well. Yeah, remember, check out YouTube. They they do great stuff over there. So check them out. Easy Achievers, as always, YouTube, uh, podcast services. Remember, five-star reviews help the algorithms. Freeze way to support. Like, comment, share the videos. Remember, do all these things with everyone. VGU, of, uh, uh, everyone. This is free things that you can just do. Click a button. That helps us a lot patreon.com if you want to support us financially 
Aside from that, thank you guys so much for listening to this two-hour podcast. Uh, we we did a total of like four hours of podcasting today. I did not realize that. Uh, so, Emmett, I very much appreciate you for your time. Thank you so much. This this guy is uh, great. You are always there to help me. You at least uh, – and you reply to my emails, which I very much appreciate. <laughs> no problem, you, man. You'll always be shocked. You. You'll be shocked of the, of the people who just – nothing. Uh, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. Um I am going to go stare at a clock until Persona 5 Royal comes out to Xbox. But until then, remember, go Chief.